Did you do you see my books over there? The note over there. I see your your fake books. Yeah, the CGI shelf by the green screen. Yeah, no, but the green screen books are working. My green screen books are working. We have your a green, couple. Jay's green screen wife is working. Um, you fake wife. It's <laughs> the fake wife. All right, we're live, guys. I I'm here. We got we got some bigots on YouTube, some bigots on Rockfin. Both you guys. Got my deep fake wife right here. I got deep fake Jay Dyer, deep fake, deep fake Jamie Tristan. Dyer. I have uh, the the dynamic duo. I've got uh, one of the, one of them is a legitimate researcher. The other one is an e celebrity named Jay Dyer. Um, so I'm here with with Jamie and Jay, <laughs> the king of the soy face. Look, he just got soy faced into the into the CGI bookshelves. All right, we uh, what a great topic to come back on. We are talking about celebrity handlers we're talking about kanye west uh we're going to talk about the the culture of so, mass are we media. live right now to all all five of your viewers or? yeah 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 all, th all, th all three are there all three are there on youtube one and a half on <laughs> that's on just the, your uh, kids in the other room right <laughs> yeah <laughs> it's, my, it's my wife and kids in the other room they're in the other room on the gateway computer from 2004 that's right that's absolutely right so yeah we got uh we're going to be talking about about hollywood and who better to talk about Hollywood, mind control, mass manipulation, than Jay Dyer and Jamie. I, I actually knew Jamie's work before I ever knew Jay's work. Back in the day, 2009 or so, 2008, 2009, we used to listen to, to the stuff that Jamie was doing on the internets. This was back well, before, before iPhones and all that, if you kids remember those days. OG, yep. conspiracy. OG conspiracy expert yeah. Jamie right here. Uh, we're we're talking about we got a lot of topics we can hit on, but um, I guess the the big one right now is uh, Kanye West. Kanye Yay, always changing his names like a lot of these uh, a Ye lot of these celebrities. Ye, Ye. Yeezy. Um, yeah. So the the whole Kanye thing has been kind of weird. It's been a real vindication of like the work that. Jay and Jamie have been doing for so long, the stuff that we've been talking about for years. Um, I can even, I can pull up, I've got the image here of Harley Pasternak, who is... Take it easy, take it easy. That's one of Kanye's that best was free. songs. That's free. Nobody even super chatted right there. Yeah, that's true. Take it easy. That's true. And, and just so you guys know, you are required to super chat every time Jay sings. Uh, he, he gets really insecure if you don't super chat when he sings because he doesn't know whether you like it or not. It's kind of part of his MK Ultra programming. I'm transitioning. I'm transitioning, not in a biological sense, but to a new career. I'm going to be a pop star. Everybody's seen my pop star songs that are already topping the charts. Cringe yeah. core. Cringe core. So, yes. Yeah. No, but anyway, I, I have all kinds of information I'm ready to present here to help bolster the case and like you said you know it's weird because this stuff is so obvious when you really look at it and spend a lot of time researching it but to a lot of people this still sounds like crazy land right like yeah. people yeah. think celebrity handlers oh yeah right are they uh flying on the spaceship with tupac and elvis as well <laughs> right that people think this is you know i hear this stuff still yeah and this is this is pretty wild because even I was surprised that you know Ye put this out. I mean, he's he's definitely going hard. He's definitely going hard. I mean, he's getting a lot of trouble for certain things that he's saying, which are kind of if you look at some of the things that he's saying, if you were to replace the one ethnicity with the word white, these are just the normal things that the left says all the time, you know, about the you know the, the white man keeping everyone down and whatnot. So he's he's taking a lot of flack for that part of it. Um, but you know, ye, yay, ye, z. Uh, you you know when your you know when your trainer sends you a message, you guys, Jay, Jamie, you know when your trainer sends you a message threatening to institutionalize you again and send you to zombie land forever and get you forced drugged. I mean, that's like a normal thing for e celebs like us that we have to deal with. Yeah. But, um, well, my that, makeup. Don't people have my direct cell phone number? My makeup people. So yeah, yeah that's true. We've heard a lot of rumors about makeup and oh, yeah. that they can put drugs in the makeup of celebrities. Yeah. Well, that would so in make other sense. So in other words, if you, if you try to go around your programming, uh, they'll still, you know, they'll drug your milkshakes, they'll drug your makeup. Yeah. So um, we won't name anybody's names, but so, but yeah, we, we've heard some pretty wild 
credible uh, stories about this kind of stuff. But, you know, this is something that, like I said, like even I was really skeptical of a lot of this stuff for a long time. But then all this, these details leak out over the years and looking at this topic of celebrity handlers and mind control and all that for the last, I don't know, 15 years, Jamie, probably same amount. Like I can remember all the times that stuff like this has come out in the past. And so it's, it's, it's just yet another confirmation uh, of, of our analysis of the situation. And that's why so many of these people have had such a long time connection to shadow government, deep statey type of people. For example, a lot of people forget that Brittany dated like a black ops dude from like he was, he died in uh, Afghanistan and he was some kind of black ops uh, handler. Well, guy. Look, dude, I we don't need like, I'm not against interracial dating and stuff like that. I'm not sure why that would offend you. Uh huh. Black uh, ops. <laughs> Was that her recent boyfriend, like her most recent? No, this was a boyfriend that she, because she's had a lot of boyfriends. So <laughs> she dated a dude for a, a brief time in um, early, uh, late 2000s, early 2010s. And he died and it was a big news story because like, you know, he, he had a suspicious death in Afghanistan. But oh, wow. so there's, a, you know, there's, a, there's a, a series of weird characters like this in her life that um, I mean, I'm not going to spend too much time with Brittany. I'm just pointing out that before all this Kanye stuff, we did, you know, live streams with uh, Sam Tripoli and Isaac Bishop and Chrissy Mayer within the last year on the subject of Brittany, because basically the type of stuff that's coming out now with Kanye came out a year ago with Brittany. So yeah. it's just sort of another confirmation. Yeah, well, I remember, I mean, back in the day, Brittany, Jamie, you used to, you put out a lot of stuff about Brittany back in 2009, 10, right? Like mm -hmm. when she was, uh, was that during her, when she cut off all her hair and was having that kind of public meltdown? Yeah, that was something I was kind of watching in real time. And then that gave me the clue to look at all these other Disney celebrities like Miley Cyrus and Selena Gomez and Demi Lovato. Don't forget Amanda Bynes, her breakdown, and she said she was microchipped. Remember that? Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, Amanda Bynes. Who, Hillary, did Hillary Duff have a breakdown? I don't know about that. Uh, Lindsay um, Lohan. <clears throat> um, but yeah, so like way back in the day, they did that VMA performance where um, Madonna came down the wedding cake and kissed Christina and Britney. So that like kind of popped off this whole generation. That was like a passing of the torch of the witches to the next generation of witches, basically. Exactly, mm -hmm. because she was like in the Freemason top hat. She had the tails. She was the um, androgynous she was the head witch. bridegroom. Yeah. Yeah. And so she was passing on the, pre the high priestess. Exactly. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. You remember that? Absolutely. Absolutely. And the, you mentioned like Lindsay Lohan, and you remember that period where a lot of those, and a lot of them are former Disney kids, which we'll get into. Exactly. And there, there was that thing they were called the Anti Panty Club or something like that. It was very oh, some childish. Yeah, yeah and they Paris used to go Hilton. around not wearing panties, <laughs> and then the the paparazzi would take pictures of their, of, oh, of their, uh, they, they, they cudas, and they would, uh, I don't know, it was like a big gross thing. I don't, I don't know what was going on with that, but the, the now, hypersexualization. Is this, is this a handler named Cooter? Yes. Yes. <laughs> Okay, I'm not familiar with Cooter. Could you go into that, or what do you mean? Yeah, no, we know you're not, Jay. It's okay. Um. <laughs> <laughs> this is my deep fake. This is my deep. This is my deep fake. This is my sure. deep fake um, wife. So I'm over here googling what is Cooter and slang. <laughs> no, wait. Yeah, don't don't Google image that. Okay, who is Cooter? Okay, go ahead. Anyway, I'm sorry. Go ahead. <laughs> so yeah, I mean the the anti fancy club thing. I mean that's the the hypersexualization of all those girls back in the day, and then the mixing of like. Uh, the normalization of the lesbian stuff was kind of popping off uh, at that time. Were you tempted to drop your panties in the anti-panty phase or did you just still, did you not? I've actually kind of it? always been the kind of an anti-panty kind of guy. So put a burn for me. Huh. Oh, okay. She's keeping up with burns. Yeah. Sick, the sick, sick burn chart. So <laughs> I'm keeping track. Oh, I think it's no. two and two. Actually. Oh, okay. It's two and two. Okay. So. We're still even anyway. I mean, it's kind um, of a subjective phenomenon too, because like some, she might think it's a sick burn, and others in the audience might agree that it was not so sick. So uh, 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 others plural in the audience, as if there's multiple people in the audience. Or, yeah, obviously, I'm my not wife sure there actually kids, is. Remember? <laughs> oh, yeah, there's three kids on the, in the audience in the other room. That's right. <laughs> but yeah, you were saying so these girls were hypersexualized, right? Mm. And um, so this is just kind of opening the door for. I don't know what we can say on YouTube. Yeah, you do. 
child sex R-I-G-H-E-S. Child, let's like say like child abuse, you know, exploitation so, of children. Well, yeah. like rights that children you say CSA. can consent to things. CSA. Because Britney was the poster child for like, remember when she did that Rolling Stone cover with her in the Teletubby and the underwear? And she's on I don't the phone. remember the Teletubby thing. That's no, I don't know about this one. Oh, yeah. So she's laying in her, literally in her child be hood bedroom surrounded by all of her um like her trophies and her dollies wow. and stuff and they're doing this photo shoot i think she's about 16 or 17 and she's got like um just in her underwear and on the phone and she's got a teletubby under her arm and this is the cover of rolling stone like the very one of the very first um covers that she did <clears throat> and so this is laying the groundwork for what we're got going on now which is saying kids can consent to this stuff oh. because they enjoy it because look how much Britney's enjoying her sexuality as a child. Oh, you, so she was prepping everybody for the uh, groom, groom. Yeah, we know it. You know it. Right. Well, yeah. no, it's kind of the Kinsey style thing of like, yes. oh, you know, this is normal. Exactly. The children. Okay. Uh, do, was that around the time? Remember Oprah when she made that disgusting statement? She was she basically was talking about abuse as a child. She's like. And it feels good. She's like, you know, it, it's like, and a lot when, of people will be so shocked because they, they think it's going to be a violent act. But she's like, you know, it feels good when you're a kid and this happens. And she's talking about things that happened to her when she was a child. And she used to interview a lot of like uh, abuse survivors back yeah. in the day. But yeah, that was, that was around the same time, I think, when Oprah was talking about, well, yeah, you know, child abuse, it, it feels good to the kids. That's why it happened so much. I brought this up. Is it this? Yeah. Okay, so um, it's I'm trying to find the date of when she was on that cover. I brought the Rolling Stone thing up a couple of weeks ago with Rachel and um, 1999. I'm mean, not the Rolling wow. Stone, the yeah. Oprah thing. And yeah, it was super creepy. She wasn't condoning it, but she's saying that children can enjoy it. She said, "quote If the predator knows what they're doing." Okay, so there's the tele, sure. there's the Teletubby. I, 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 Dude, that was crazy. When I was when I, I don't know, I was probably. I'm born in 1987, so I would have been 12 when that came out, and so I'm definitely was not focused on the Teletubby at that age. I was focused on other <laughs> things in the image. The but, belly button. Yeah, the belly button ring and stuff, which is, <laughs> yeah. that's kind of like a weird, you know. Um, belly button rings? That's what you were thinking about? When no, you just like I'm talking about the aesthetic of it. Like, she really popularized that back in the day. Remember, the girls okay. in middle school yeah. started getting belly button rings back then. Yeah. It was kind of scandalous. Gotcha. Yeah, because her and Paris Hilton kind of set a standard in fashion for like low rise jeans, um, very. Simple. No, I started. I was one of the first it girl divas, and I had the uh, the hip huggers and the the low waisted jeans. <laughs> yeah, well, I wanted to. I wanted. I wanted people to get into whale tail, and so I, I kind of did that first. Then Paris yeah. got that from me, and then Britney started doing stuff. Well, oh, I remember I that because when Jay did it, though, it was there was this there was kind of this beautiful free flow and manliness with it, like. Because it was it was the hip huggers, but they were the bush bearers as well. Because it would kind of puff out the top, you know. They're yeah. very low riding, so you would you, yeah. you get that you get that bush fluff. And if you have a gunt or a fupa, it's it also helps kind of with that aesthetic. Absolutely. And Jay was a bit portly as 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 a young as a youngin. <laughs> I could see you in like jinko jeans, like all the way down to the ground. <laughs> the hip hugger jinko. So I, I had it. I had a. I had whale tail in jinko jeans. Okay, sure. Yeah. Um, okay, so speaking of fashion, uh, so back then in the two thousands, early like late nineties. No, I'm serious. Uh, low rise jeans, skinny. Um, they call it heroin chic, and they're saying yeah, I was in the nineties. I know <laughs> it's back. And let's just remind everybody what the girls going out look like. That's Lindsay Lohan and Nicole Richie. Can you see that? Oh, man, I remember. That's so – and the, uh, the Olsen twins. They look like time. vegans. <laughs> yeah, yeah, the Olsen twins too. They had that. Yeah, they so, did that and, too. and this is what's strange. When you look at, when you look at the history of, uh, well, like intelligence agency and military interrogations, a big part of it's like you know food deprivation. I mean, obviously mm. food deprivation and starvation can be used as mind control tools. But what's strange is you see what Kanye kind of revealed here with the Harley Pasternak character is when you look at Pasternak's pedigree, first of all, he worked for uh, like the, De the Canadian Department of Defense. I forget what it's called, the DND or something like that. And he said in an interview that he was actually working with drugs. And because he worked with the government, he was allowed 
uh, access to certain drugs. I have the clip pulled up right here, but I don't think you guys would be able to hear it, Jay and Jamie, and, and who cares what the audience hears. Um, but he, he, in this clip, he says, he says, I, I was using drugs like modafinil, which modafinil is a drug that enables people to stay awake for long periods of time. Uh, one of the side effects of modafinil is actually like uh, mania, uh, feeling manic. So it's interesting, to, him doing military research with stimulants uh, that keep you awake for days on end. Uh, and who knows what other drugs he said, he kind of laughed when the guy said, Oh, what do you mean? Like performance enhancing drugs? And he kind of scoffed and goes, yeah, <laughs> not just that all kinds of drugs. And this guy came straight out of straight out of working for the Canadian military, quits his job during his, I think he was going for his PhD, quits his, uh, uh his job with the military and then just starts training celebrities. Um, which, you know, I mean, this guy is basically, if he's just a normal trainer, what he's teaching celebrities how to do some kettlebell swings, telling them to eat, what, chicken and broccoli, like some normie uh, uh, bodybuilding diet. Right. Why, why does this guy need to make millions of dollars, right? So he's, he's well-connected in Hollywood. He's got connections to the military. He's got a history of doing research at universities that were involved, actually involved in the MK Ultra studies. And then... The, he's also got this history of kind of gaslighting stars in, um, in articles. He wrote these articles critiquing the bodies of former Disney princesses or like the Disney uh, girls. Like he basically called Britney Are fat. Things? He's like fat shaming them in article for People magazine. And he says something in this article. He's like, well, Britney's obviously not working out, but we're not trying to fat shame her right now. <laughs> but she's not working out. And this is 2010 or so. So then he starts hanging out with people like Kanye, Kim Kardashian. Uh, he, he was Mac Miller's trainer when Mac Miller died. He worked with Brittany Murphy around the time that Brittany Murphy died. So this guy is like all up in the lives of all these celebrities, many of whom had major drug and addiction problems. Uh, he, well, there was a picture of him with Ellen Page, too. Exactly. So yeah. the reveal of him, you know this message to Kanye where he's telling him like, I'll have you committed, dude, I'll have you 51 50. Uh, and which is like, that's the, uh, in California, the 51 50 is you can force institutionalize somebody for like 72 hours, uh, under psychiatric pretext. So he, he's threatening to use weaponized psychiatry against his client. If his client doesn't start saying the bad things publicly that he's not allowed to say and going against his handlers. So, I don't, this this guy right here is so he's so interesting to me. I'm sorry for the long rant, but when you mentioned like the heroin chic look and the starvation mm. used in mind control, we know that starvation was used in like the um, in the Romanian prisons, for instance. Uh, combine that with the, the, they were also using in these communist prisons the um, like sexual like ritual abuse and sexual abuse right. combined with starvation, combined with putting people in uh, confined spaces or damp. Uh, cold water for long periods of time so anyways it's just kind of strange to me that all these celebrities get involved with this trainer guy um and they start having these drug problems or mania problems problems sleeping problems with their you know their so-called mental health right so he he kind of does represent this uh uh, the, the kind of like the, the celebrity handler in many ways that people have been speculating about and talking about, you know, I mean, Colonel, uh, what's his name? Colonel Tom. You guys talked mm -hmm. about him on your Elvis. Exactly. He's stream. like the archetype of this, what we're talking yeah, about. Yeah. In fact, and I wanted to go back a little further too, because there's a couple, you don't have to put those up, but if, uh, uh, if anybody wants, I did a video earlier today that ties in with the stream that we're doing with Tristan, which is about, Kind of the history of uh, celebrity handlers and uh, shadow government connections and intelligence going way back, even before uh, more of the, the modern stuff that we think of. And uh, one of the classic examples is Stalin's spy, this woman named Olga Chekova, who was sort of like the one of the most famous uh, German, quote unquote, actresses of her day. But she was, she was actually Russian. Um, Tiny Mustache Man called her the uh, archetypal actress of the R.E.I.C.H., and so, uh, but it turns out that Olga was a, uh, more or less a spy for, for Stalin. It seems that that's, it's not hundred percent certain, but it seems like that's the case. And so that goes all the way back to world war two. And then in the case of, uh, Sonia Weigert, uh, she has an amazing story, which we just watched the movie 
about her recently. And I mentioned her on today's stream and covered her, her uh, for several minutes. And she was cajoled into sexual operations as a celebrity. She was the most famous actress in Sweden. And the government uh, came to her and said, the allies said, you're going to uh, basically sleep with the um, S uh, high command guys of the, of the Axis powers and give us information. And so this actually ruined her career. Wow. She was uh, mm-hmm. seen as like this big, you know, basically a Nazi thought <laughs> because she was sleeping around with all the Nazis. Right. And so this ruined her career. Uh, but in reality, she was actually forced into this by the, by her government. So the <clears throat> point of that is that uh, the techniques that you're talking about with these handlers and what this goes way back, People were doing this a long time ago. The government comes to you and says, do this for uh, patriotic purposes, or by the way, we'll, we'll ruin your career. So they're basically forced into this. Um, they imprisoned uh, Sonia's dad and, and made her work uh, as basically a swallow. If you don't know what a swallow is, it's, a, it's an SEX operative who compromises people. And I think people are more familiar with this now, given the Jeff Stein McEffrey uh, information that we've seen in the last several years. So this is a very well-known, very uh, prominent thing. And most likely, of course, this goes on with uh, Hollywood people. I've got a whole giant list of people who were, you know, in varying capacity spies and did intelligence work as famous celebrities in the last century. So it's and it's not just restricted to Hollywood. I mean, these are this is a Russian actress or excuse me. Yeah, she's in Hitchcock films. And then we've got Sonia Wiegert, who's the Swedish actress, who was the most, she was the A-lister of Sweden. Like she was the most famous actress in Sweden. And they forced her to be a spy and a, and a swallow. Um, so the, but I want to also tie that into the military aspects, which you said, because I, I hadn't really thought about, um, a personal trainer would be uh, a handler. That's actually a perfect yeah. potential, yeah. potential role for a handler. I'd obviously, I don't know if this person actually is, but it does make sense because you usually think of a handler being a manager or, uh, you know, some sort of agent, or you think of a handler being even the doctor to the stars. A lot of people speculated that. The Jacko's doctor, uh, you know, was was some sort of sus character because I think he had been the doctor to several famous people who seemed to pass away from drug use, right? And so, just like with T- Colonel Tom and the, you know the the doctor in that case that might have been involved in being a handler too, um, this is an old trick apparently where you either the SARS are always on drugs or they get them on drugs or they give them uppers and downers and then you know get them hooked and then they're kind of under this control and then they they hold them sort of hostage with contracts and with money. And, uh, Oh, by the way, if you don't do this, we'll ruin you in the press. And we'll, you know, so basically this is, this is how it works. This is the, the, um, military techniques of controlling uh, pop stars. Yeah. It's, 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 you get this window here with, uh, with yay and his trainer into just, and of course, it's it's kind of speculation, but Ye has definitely indicated that and shown that this guy does behave kind of psychopathically, right, in a very manipulative way, gaslighting him, telling him, you know, we, we, we're going to get together and have a loving conversation, right? That's how he starts the message out. We're going to have a loving conversation. You're not going to cuss. You're not going to, uh, you know, say stupid stuff. Uh, and if we don't, the other option <clears throat> is that I, I have you forced institutionalized and drug into zombie land forever, so, I mean, that's that's some pretty heavy handed threatening um, and blackmail, which really like makes one sympathize with uh, uh, with with Kanye quite a bit. But the uh, the the drug aspect and then you think about when these personal trainer type people are working with a celebrity you you would definitely have access to. Uh, well, first of all, supplement supplementation for them. Right. You know, giving them, you know, perhaps tainted supplements. Uh, meal plans are a big thing right so a lot of trainers now they have yeah, access exactly. to delivered meals and the meals are pre-prepared uh you know hey you're gonna eat five meals a day and i'm gonna we'll send those to you don't worry all you got to do is i'll send you an invoice once a month your food's getting delivered to your house your supplement oh, routine's bro. getting delivered you that know? means jenny craig was my handler for years dude <laughs> so i was getting them frozen jenny craig weight loss in the mail <laughs> she was handling me dude there's no telling what what kind of uppers and downers and she was putting probably angel dust in my frozen uh, pasta lasagnas. Yeah. Damn. Your low calorie brownies for drugs. That's right. That's right. No, um, so I mean, it, it, it's a crazy. Well, no, I'm yeah, joking. This but, yeah. made me think of something um, 
that I saw in a Britney documentary a long time ago about, it was just a little, nothing of a clip of her backstage, but uh, they were saying, it's time for your shot. And she's like, oh, I have to get one of these every day. So they come and they inject something into her backside and they probably tell them that they're giving them B12 shots or some kind of, you know, vitamin. This will give you energy for your yeah, concert. Yeah, like, oh, it's just a vitamin, you know, right. cocktail. Well, did you, I don't know if Tristan by chance, Jamie got me to watch that uh, last uh, season of Black Mirror with Molly Cyrus. Did you see that one? I've not seen it, but I've heard that it, I heard it was pretty crazy. You want to summarize? Is, is there a, yeah, is there just a uh, uh, spoiler alert, but yeah, in summary, the, it takes place in a, in a dystopian sort of near future, near distant future where <clears throat> Miley Cyrus is playing a pop star. So she's basically playing herself. Yeah. And in the storyline, they um, come out with this line of uh, robots that are kind of like Alexa's in your house, but they're little pop star Miley Cyrus, Alexis, <laughs> Alexa in your house. And so uh, they decide that they want to kind of replace the pop star herself, not just with the robots, but also with holograms. Mm -hmm. And so they drug her and put her into a coma mm -hmm. and they have the ability to still kind of read her dreams. And so because in the storyline, she's actually a talented musician, they're sapping all of her creativity and, and stealing uh, ideas from her dreams because they can like read her dreams and get storyline, uh, get music from the dreams that she has. Yeah. And she's kind of in a coma and like just drugged. And so there's a point where she tries to fight this before they put her in the coma. She tries to fight it. And her uh, in that one, her handler is the manager who drugs her like uh, milkshake or something. So. Sushi or yeah so that's yeah, kind of agree. almost exactly what has been shown to be at least possible with a character like uh like harley here um yeah so the the um is there anything you want to add about the the kanye situation before we go because i got a whole list of like you know even go going back to you know the early days i mean like shirley temple used to talk about you, how yeah. they used to keep the kids in boxes. Like they used to put the kids in like Skinner boxes when they were naughty in like a wet, cold yeah. box and use hot, cold contrast as well but as other views. They make them abuse. sit on a block of ice. Uh-huh. Did you hear that? Yeah. We're talking about that. Yeah. Did you, um, <clears throat> um, did you see any of those clips that I, I sent you earlier today? You might not have had time to see them. It's uh, I, I tend to just ignore most of the things you send me. I just, but, uh, well, that's weird because when you talk, I kind of tune out. So I'm just like, I'm basically waiting until I hear a, a silence. Jamie, do you want to tell him when he's done no. and then I can tell him? <laughs> oh, two again. burns. <laughs> two more roasts. <laughs> oh, ouch. Okay. All right. So, did you get a chance to see any of those? Which one? Really? Which one did you send me? Uh, in the DMs on Twitter. I yeah, the, the articles. Which one? Because I have them pulled up. Any of them? Did you get to see any of them? I'm sorry. You were like, for talking, example, the RT one it. about uh, Ben Affleck. Right? Yeah. I mean, that, I yes. think that's yeah, yeah, exactly. No, I remember that one as well. The the Ben Affleck yeah. one. Something about Ben Affleck that you sent me that I didn't read. I just ignored. Jamie, do you want to say something interesting? Because Jay's kind of boring. <laughs> He's just way behind on burns. He's trying to like pack like He's five trying burns. To pack them in. in <laughs> He's trying to pack like a five or five or I'm trying to front load him so I could be nice to you. The later burn the discount, screen. right? Five for one. <laughs> well, let's talk about this poor guy because he. Who? Ben Jay. Affleck. Okay. Oh, Affleck. they were talking about Jay He's again. He's a okay, guy so. that looks like he's not having a good time in his life at all, ever. Like, every time you see him, he looks miserable. Like the smoking and... meme where he's outside smoking. Yeah, and yes, that's but it's, it's always like that. He's always, like, fake smiling, and as soon as he thinks someone's looking, he just drops his face, and he looks terrible. Yeah. But, so, he has been involved with the CIA for a long time. Yeah, I think he... Uh fell for admittedly chasing big booty Latinas and he probably should have stayed with Jennifer Garner who he has a bunch of kids with, right? That was his downfall. Uh, that, yeah. That would be my choice. Well, with he's back family. with Jennifer Lopez now, right? Yeah. Isn't that, they're like Isn't that back crazy? together or something. Who has been known to do some brujeria yeah, she's or into, have it done for her right. by a more powerful into, person. She's into like voodoo stuff. So. Yeah. A little Latina brujita. He's in that club. Her oh, we got a big... Beyonce. Sorry, we got a big art. Uh, there's a big earthquake just now. You got a big, a big booty Latina walking around there. Uh 
cause yeah, an earth, the, earthquake. The earth is quaking. The earth is quaking. We got, we got earth. The earth Uh-oh. is twerking. Fat earth is twerking. Fat earth, earth twerking, <laughs> baby. Fat earth just twerked and, and everything. It is, the twerked. earth is a big booty Latina. Hold on. It's a big <laughs> earthquake. We might have to get the kids and bring them. I know, but that's a mama. Joke. Is your mama around there <laughs> walking around? <laughs> that's my burn. <laughs> Jamie's got one burn. <laughs> they're fine. The kid, it woke the kids up. So they're shooting. I think it's over now. All right, so sorry, Fat Earth. We won't talk about the American <laughs> Latinas here. All right, sorry. Earth got that booty base going. Earth is extra fat and twerky. Earth right? is a booty base remix. Mm-hmm. That was a big one. Like all the doors were were uh, slamming around in the other room. Sorry, my now my adrenaline's all up. Um, I usually get fight or flight when I see Jay's you, face. Did, were you gonna fight the earth? That's why I was, I was like, I, I was already in minor fight, fight or flight because of Jay's presence, but now it's like, now it's more. I tend to go just. The Kristen street. thinks he's gonna fight an earthquake. Okay. <laughs> yeah. gonna, all right. Um, or fly away from it. Fight or flight it. Yeah. Right? So yeah, Affleck. That the article you sent me, I did. I, did, I have read that one. The uh, the RT article yeah, um, yeah, yeah. about how the CIA recruited him when he was work, but it was before the Argo film, right? Yeah, it went all the way back to that bad uh, when he played Jack Ryan. Some of all fears, which is where uh, there's like a, a nuke that goes off from terrorists, right? Shocker, right? Um, but yeah, so and then Chase Brandon, the famous uh, CIA Hollywood uh, liaison, was the one that set all that up, and they took been to langley and gave him all these visits and probably courses and the same thing happened with uh, angelina jolie when she did the movie salt like they set her up with a a famous cia operative that uh, woman melissa mela um who has a bunch of uh, books out in the 2000s about her history as a cia operative and whatnot and so i think they're, they're getting their training and by the way in today's video real quick last one i forgot to mention george clooney who uh, F. William Ingdahl has a great section on in full spectrum dominance because back at the same time when this was was going on in the 2000s, they brought Clooney to do the Darfur stuff. Remember the yeah. when he was the face of Darfur? That was um, CIA soft power like stuff in in Africa. That was an operation in Africa for obviously it's always resources, right? So it's like oil resources, uh, you know, precious minerals, whatever. Um, and they, they'll do a cover of, oh, you know, Coney, right? We got to go fight Joseph Coney. Yeah. Oh, we got to oh, we got the, the original Ford. one was the Free Tibet, right? Like Radiohead. Yeah, exactly. And that was Tibet. also uh, that was also a CIA operation. Richard Gere, um, David Lynch uh, was for that Free Tibet. Uh, in fact, Dale Cooper in Twin Peaks is a big uh, Free Tibet guy. Oh, yeah. Um, I forgot about that. Yeah. Well, and so, then uh, it, Uma no, Thurman's no. dad, by the way, was one of the key guys running the Free Tibet thing. Wow. Did, because did you know he's actually one of the few uh, honky cracker dudes in America that's called like a llama? Like the, it's a special title. Are you kidding me? What's his name? No. Uh, Shama Lama Ding Dong. I uh, just like uh, if, if you type in uh, Thurman comma Buddhism, he'll come up because he's like the most famous American Buddhist. Wow, dude, that's crazy. Yeah, I never yeah, he's like, He has like a PhD in Buddhism. Plus, he has the only title of like Lama or whatever. Because like Lamas, they have a lot of... Does he have to be sheared every like few months or something? Because they grow... <laughs> Terrible joke. That's a knee slapper there, baby. <laughs> so, yeah, uh, that's crazy. Um, I, I, I have so many notes here of like... Now, by the way, to be clear, I don't want to cut you off. I yeah. just meant to remind everybody because everybody makes a big deal about this. A lot of people feel strongly about the, you know, CIA, Tibet, China thing. Mm. I'm not saying that that makes China good. I'm just pointing out that Tibet and free Tibet is this kind of chess piece between um, the Chinese view of the Dalai Lama and Tibet and the CIA Western. So it's kind of like this one of these uh, focal points. Right, like the Ukraine is a focal point yeah. between Eastern and Western stuff. So I'm not saying to them, oh, the Chinese government's therefore good, or that the CIA. It's not a good guy, bad guy thing. It's just a fact of how this stuff goes down. Yeah. Well, remember, Ben Affleck was married to Jennifer Garner, who was in Alias. So I mentioned that today. Yeah. And she was on all of those commercials for the CIA website. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah, she actively joined the CIA to do um, PR. Did you know that? Yeah. Person. And that yeah. came out recently. Like they admitted yeah. that recently. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, I mean, to what capacity she was working, we don't know. I mean, she could have just been a PR person, but 
who knows, right? I mean, we, we don't know, but um, really, again, it just illustrates this main point of the long time interrelationship between government seeing a, a key role in utilizing Hollywood people for propaganda. And anybody who knows about the Cold War or even World War II knows how many plethora of people, famous A-list a celebrities in the 30s, 40s, 50s, and 60s also were recruited into this kind of work. Um, and I, I know all about that. I got a whole list of all that, which I can go through too. But um, yeah, I, I, yeah, for, like I, I didn't even in. know about the abuse of Shirley Temple. I mean, I heard this, but I didn't I didn't know what you guys were talking about. Well, I mean, when you th Shirley Temple was kind of the, the first child star in many ways. She was point. Like, right. groomed from the time she was a child. Um, she was surrounded. I mean, imagine how Hollywood's openly corrupt. But back then, it, it seems like it was a whole other level. Like the transition time between silent film and mm -hmm. the, what do they call them, talkies and stuff. That was a right. super degenerate and very occult time in, in film mm -hmm. production. And there was a lot of like openly satanic stuff and very Crowleyan yes. characters right. floating around. And Shirley Temple was kind of right after that. Um, and, you know, that, that poor girl probably was exposed to more insane abuse than just what she wrote about in her biography. Well, um, think about even the overt themes of the movies that made her famous she was always like a seductive little baby yep. like dancing around in little baby bikinis and yep. sitting on guys laps and saying we're married and kissing them on the lips and like super g-r-o-o-m-i-n-g like blatantly if you go watch any of her little movies i at the very least they're problematic and it's not cute to sit on a grown man's lap and kiss all over him and like Jay. I've actually never I've never seen uh yeah, Jamie's not speaking for herself. She does like to No, this is know. an intervention, Jay. We're sick of it, dude. Like we're done. We don't like a it. A live stream cute. intervention to question him. Uh, okay, my mojo. But they, you're so right because in that period there's so many weird things like baby prostitutes. Yeah. There was movies about that, say that cartoons. So, don't say that on YouTube. Well, I don't I don't think that maybe it's not too bad. It's okay. my channel to get nuked, anyways. Jay, who cares? You've already, you you, you already indicated that uh, that who. Yeah, I don't who cares. want your channel to get nuked. The the theme of so many of her like stories and movies and shows was that she was older than she was, like yeah. right. a grown up baby, basically. Yeah, right. and he's right to talk about that really weird degeneracy period of the the nineteen teens into the twenties, because. There was actually, a, it wasn't just Hollywood, like other countries like Germany had a really big film presence and, fi and film industry back at that time. And there's a TV show that is set during that time called Babylon Berlin. And in the second season of that, uh, they, they put a lot of time and effort into situating it in the German expressionist uh, film era. And this is when Weimar Republic is pushing a lot of... Um, all of the degeneracy that we see nowadays, they were doing that at the time of Weimar Republic. And the indus the film industry at that time was really into it. And they were still doing silent films then. And um it included a lot of German expressionism, which was satanic, like over overtly satanic stuff. Um, a lot of the actors and actresses were also filming prawn at the same time back then. Yep. So it's it's a weird parallel to where we are now, ex almost exactly like a hundred years ago. Um and I'm not telling everybody to watch Babylon Berlin. It's it's a pretty decent show. I mean, it's pretty, I guess, fairly historically accurate for the time period. But the whole second season is about this this time period when you're talking about it. Just in German cinema, same things going on in America and Hollywood as well. Well, you, you know, one of the one of the films that she was in, um, let's see, one of her first speaking roles, she played the kid in Hollywood, and this was in a series that was called Baby Burlesques. So yes, that's like right. they, they didn't even try to that's hide it back then. Said. Yeah, really, really degenerate, weird stuff. Obviously, like you said, G-R-O-M. But I think, too, that they were they had the idea back then that they could kind of raise people to be specific yeah. roles so they could prepare them not just to, to be uh, but, but for being um, useful for compromise, that kind of a thing. It, well, exactly. I mean, when yeah. you see when you, what you just said about actresses being used in uh, pro in pronagraphy, um, children stars being raised in that environment, the amount of blackmail material that 
they have just in the studios like that are owned by studios like Paramount back in the day is, is staggering. But then you combine that with the fact that they're also interfacing with famous people around the world, politicians. Um, I think, didn't Shirley Temple grow up to be involved in, um, wasn't she like an ambassador or something? Mm-hmm. Good really? ambassador. Oh, I thought you meant like a <laughs> ambassador. No, to I, an thought, I, I, I thought I got to look this up. I think she may have been involved in government work later. Oh, she worked interesting. For the UN I didn't know that. When she got well, Audrey Hepburn apparently did too. Um, so that's a pretty common. And by the way, Audrey Hepburn had a, a connection to um, espionage. and Dude, she was the uh, United States ambassador to Ghana. Interesting. She was an ambas- She was the, uh, uh, let's see, she was the ambassador to Czechoslovakia from 1989 to 1992. You're talking about Shirley Temple. Shirley Temple. Okay. Weird. Under George H.W. Bush, she was the ambassador to Czechoslovakia. It, this reminds me too. Uh, do you do you remember the Aviator, the Martin Scorsese movie? Yes. There's a scene where um, Howard Hughes is like when his pictures are getting really popular, and he basically brings in all the 15 to 16 year old girls that are hot. Yeah. To, to uh, audition for roles, and he basically the, it's implied that he was just basically sleeping with all of them. If you remember that too, so kind of- that's taking place in the same time period of the 20s you know, Hollywood era. And the, the, the flapper girl thing and all the, you know, there was a lot of this programming and it was, was, the twenties were almost like a mini sixties in a lot of ways. Right. Exactly. Yeah. Actually other uh, analysts have made that comparison to the sixties and to where we are now. Uh Mm -hmm. It's odd. The 2020s very close to the 1920s. Very similar with the free love stuff, polyamory, non monogamous relationships. Um, that, you know, well, a lot of the um, transition things was happening in the 1920s. Well, and Shirley Temple, those films, she often played a, a tomboy or like a boyish little girl. She would be, they would kind of make her try to seem attractive to men and then also seem boyish. Um, so Yeah, well, yeah, a lot, a lot of the 20s and 30s uh, film stars were, they would, you know, they often dressed up. When girls would dress like men. The men would dress very, dress very effeminate. That was that was yeah. a very common thing. Fashion was very androgynous yeah. in the twenties, with the waistlines being dropped, and so the boyish silhouette was in, and the short hair. Of it. Yeah. Oh, there's this other one. This one came up in a Twitter thread. This this actress Theda Bara. Mm-hmm. Do you, have you uh, have you looked at her? Because she she's a very strange character. You look at the photos of her. She almost looks like she could be like, a, I don't know, like Crowley's sister or something. I'm pulling out some pictures of her right now. But she was in a 20s, I think she was a silent film star. And, but she used to do the, you know, dressing up as a man stuff as well, the kind of um, androgyny stuff. Yep. And a lot of very occult films were being made at that same time. Let me pull this up so you guys can see it. You should watch the uh, if, if you don't have time to watch the show, just watch the the theme song for Babylon Berlin because it's it's basically just about this stuff. Okay, it's all in the introduction to the theme show, the, the theme to the show. Catherine yeah. Hepburn was very androgynous. Well, she did that on mm-hmm. purpose. She yeah. specifically wanted to be more masculine. Oh, look at her. There's some that <clears throat> name is sounds familiar. She might show up in one of my books somewhere as an example of something. She's a strange character. She's a she really looks like weird. she's having a uh, she's been eating too many carbs over there where she's at. So she also looks very like she's smoking opium or something. Look at her eyes. <laughs> it does look like an opium. She looks like op- like opiated. Oh, look at this one. She looks she totally oatmeal looks- and opium. <laughs> my carbs. My carbs. Look at this photo. It's a little small. Let's see if I can find a bigger one of that. She and totally this was is, a, a talkies actress who dressed androgynously. I'm yeah, not familiar the, with her. Theta Barra, she she was kind of like one of the first Hollywood so-called sex symbols, right? And she was very satanic. Oh. Here's wow. an image. Um, this is before she was at the transition from the silent films, and I think I don't know if she was in any talkies. Look at this one. Um, can you see that one? This is the type of stuff she was involved. With. I mean, who knows? What's really going on here? I don't know if that's from one of her mm-hmm. films or what. Um, 
but she's a strange character. Uh, T H E D A Bara. But they they considered her. She was like the new woman, right? And mm-hmm. she could, they, she was a feminist, and she would you know, she played like Cleopatra, and she was in like very pornographic films as well, um, and a lot of super occult stuff. Mm-hmm. Um, that was see, it looked like it was kind of inspired by Golden it does, Dawn. Yeah. Wow. Um, oh, I bet it was Golden Dawn. That's a good point. She might have Check been friendly one. with those people, yeah. Right. Check that one out. That's another example. Um, Look at this picture. The, this is from one of the, her films. You see that? Hmm. It looks like Just a like magic, magic square. square. It's a magic square with some kind of ritual going on. Yeah. And that so. comes up in the in, in the second season of Babylon Berlin. They go to a big... Uh, eyes wide shut style uh occult ritual the, the all the hollywood pe- or the, well they're not it's not hollywood it's it's german hollywood uh-huh. um but yeah they, they have that in there films that had a lot of satanic themes that's what i said like yeah. 10 minutes ago jay we don't listen to you dude she doesn't we neither don't pay of you attention listen. To i'm basically saying, just bro. talking like- <laughs> i don't am i even here am i just like <laughs> is this just am i interacting with altars in my head and they don't even uh this, by the way we, this is how look at this picture Look at this famous picture of Greta Garbo. If, where are you sending? Um, I'm trying Put to figure out what date this is. Where are you? Where are you sending? This it? is a scandalous. Here in the uh, the chat of cool. Zoom, cool. this is a quote scandalous image from the golden age that shook Hollywood. Shook so Hollywood. I mean, she's like you know the a list of her time, and there she's wearing go. she's wearing a man's outfit. So yeah. What was the? Did you send another picture before that? I'll pull that up too. Uh, no, I didn't. Okay, so that's you sent another link. That's just the standard blackmail uh, stuff that you send because yeah, Jay sends me a lot of blackmail messages right. that I probably shouldn't pull up on screen. A lot of threats. Yeah, Tristan. Um, I'm gonna send Tristan. you back to Zombie Land. I think is what I said to you last time. <laughs> back to the coom pod, Tristan. <laughs> All right. But yeah. yeah, I mean, it's amazing because you know this. This is. Uh, a lot of this isn't new i mean i I don't know that we had the degree of the degeneracy uh back then like we have now but i mean uh, because it seems to be off the hook nowadays well it's it's a kanye is a teaching moment it's an opportunity to unpack this (laughs) (laughs) let's unpack unpack this in a teaching moment um so all right so you mentioned did somebody did you bring up aubrey Hepburn or was or uh, Judy Garland? Did somebody t- mention Judy Garland? I was yet? about to mention Judy Garland that she said that they would just keep her drugged all the time. The studios kind of enforced <laughs> this drugging of her, and mm. that she basically had to live at the studio and she couldn't really do anything. And so it was kind of like an imprisonment, is the way she she described it. Um, but yeah, a, a lot of the uh, if you watch that Coen Brothers movie, uh, the one where they're they're trying. To <clears throat> With George Clooney, where they're trying to, and Josh Brolin, where they're trying to make <clears throat> Hail Caesar. Josh Brolin plays a fixer, and part of his role is to contain and, and kind of sort of like keep all the drama on the down low. And he goes and and makes sure that so and so gets an abrasion if they need it. And he kind of polices and keeps. He's the one that would be keeping these people. He plays like a handler. Is what I'm trying to say. Uh huh. Yeah. You, so the, the concept Hail, of Hail the fixer. You want to get into that, Jay and Jamie, preferably. Uh... Uh, in relation to like early Hollywood, because Judy Garland had like this weird thing yeah. with Betty Asher, uh, and she said uh, the fixers were kind of like studio spies. I yes. think, right? Yeah, let's, that's let's... exactly the role that Josh Brolin plays in, in Hail Caesar, and, and they're basically just hired to do uh, beat somebody up if needed, uh, squash a story if needed. So, like in Hail Caesar, he threatens. Uh, Tilda Swinton, who's a reporter, and basically is like, you know, I'm going to beat your butt if you put this drama story out. He makes sure that uh, if a if a if a baby needs to be abroaded, it happens. Um, he makes sure he makes sure that the girls, uh, you know, stay in the studio if they need to stay in the studio. I mean, sort of a, a combination between a handler slash um, bouncer slash, um, you know, control the narrative, control the gossip kind of kind of character. That's Hail Caesar. Right. Like a like a mobster, bo- bo- mob boss slash bodyguard, bodyguard slash uh, spy. Mm. Which I get was Kanye was Ye was accusing Harley of being a guy that was basically doing stuff like that. You know, he's accusing him of being a handler, and he keeps using the term handler the last I guess month or so. 
uh, in his interview. So Ye is calling these people handlers. He's talking about the, the contracts, right? So the contracts are a big part of this too. You've got the, the fixers and the handlers, but then the contractual obligements, like he, he, something Ye mentioned, I don't know if you caught this one. He said, and he kind of tried to, he kind of tried to, uh, he tried to try to give the benefit of the doubt to what's his name up, Jay Z and, and Beyonce. Uh, but he says, like, yeah, I bet Jay Z and Beyonce didn't see this part in the contract, but there's literally a, like a no Christ clause where they say you can't have God or you talk about Jesus in your lyrics. Um, wow. so he he mentioned that he didn't give it, he didn't offer proof for it, but he said that that's in the contracts with these right. record companies. So there were lifestyle clauses in some of these contracts as well of like who you're allowed to publicly associate with or you you're not allowed oh. to have relationships with certain people unless it's beneficial to the career which is basically signed over to these um to these record executives in the music industry or you know film executives in the um in the the entertainment industry and it seems like the music the music music industry came later right the uh, like music industry was did it kind of blossom out of hollywood or is it uh how, how would you? That's how would a you good question. I'm, I'm not exactly sure directly the relationship between these two industries, but what is documentable is uh, that they both have connections to shadow gov and to intel <clears throat> intelligence and to organized crime. So mm -hmm. both music and Hollywood um, connect to those worlds from their very uh, inception for right. sure. And the Laurel right. Canyon scene that you've documented <coughs> and the, you know, um, uh, strange seeds inside the Canyon. Um, what's, what's the author's name? Well, so yeah. And, and, and so if we go to like Dave's research, I Dave mean, Dave McGowan. goes all the way. Yeah. yeah we, he goes all the way back to one of the first, uh, Laurel Canyon dwellers was Harry Houdini and Houdini was, you know, an early, uh, Hollywood famous type of person who also was a spy. He was a spy for Scotland Yard, we know, but um, he might have also been a, sky, a spy speculated for um, U.S. Uh, intelligence as well. So um, the earliest days of, of even before the 60s counterculture, but, you know, back to the days of Harry Houdini, he, he was actually a spy. Um, uh, quite a few people in the Laurel Canyon scene had connections. The music scene had connections to intelligence. The Mamas and the Papas uh, had direct some of some of the members were actually in Vietnam and had done black ops in Vietnam, and then they go on to be these these you know counterculture rock stars. Uh, the Doors, everybody knows about Admiral Morrison and, and Jim Morrison's dad being you know involved in the Gulf of Tonkin right. fake Stephen flag Morrison, event. Admiral Stephen Morrison. That was one of the right. big ones that you know Dave McGowan really harped on. Right. And um, I mean, it's just the, 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 the Crosby's, right? Yeah, Zappa and Edgewood Arsenal, right. Exactly. Um, so that's that's all totally there in the music scene. And Dave also touches on the if you go up Wonderland Avenue, which is that house where uh, it used to be the old Air Force base, which was um, Laurel Canyon Studios owned by the Air Force. It was the biggest, fanciest studio of the time that Walt Disney and uh, Jimmy Stewart and Marilyn Monroe had special access to. Um, when you when you look into that, it turns out <laughs> that was all, you know, 100 percent collusion between the, the a-listers and hollywood in the 50s so this is and, and this is disney too in the 50s so this is not like something that blossoms out of you know the 60s or just the this is for this is before the cold war yeah it's this intimate relationship between these two these two worlds and so Cary grant um he did uh espionage work in fact he was asked by the oss and mi6 to inform on other actors that might have tiny mustache man leanings mm -hmm. and one of the people he ratted on was errol flynn the other famous actor who did have tiny mustache man leanings and was suspected of being a tiny mustache man spy <laughs> so oh, wow. uh jimmy stewart i didn't realize that i mean i knew about his spying and his history of this kind of stuff well, i had no idea Car carrie he... grant let's add the drug aspect too because the lsd i mean he was correct a major he was one of the first of people to do it. yeah he was one of the first he was doing lsd before any of the uh, 60s hippie people. Were yeah, it. and he, he lauded it as some sort of great, beautiful therapy that was helping him to heal his trauma and all this stuff. But then didn't he, he was like right. a mess, right? He was like a monster of a person in his personal life, if I remember correctly. Well, there's all kinds. I, I'm not I'm not exactly sure what was going on with Jimmy, or with, uh, with Cary Grant. So that's actually, I don't know. Uh, but I have heard that, what you're saying is very possible. Uh, I just don't know enough about his personal life. Um, but I did want you to see this. This is very... So Jimmy Stewart, for example, 
was working with the FBI and made a whole movie with the FBI called the FBI story. <laughs> but he wasn't, he was also an informant for the FBI. And have you ever seen his Laurel Kenyon um, promos? No. So they were, they were declassified not too long ago. Uh, you should be able to play it if it still comes up. Yeah, let's see. Is it in the chat? I'm looking for it because uh, Jimmy Stewart, Laurel Canyon, uh, Air Force. I didn't even realize that Jimmy Stewart became a two star general. Oh, well, yeah, here it is. You so know, this, this, this is going to be a great segue. Just, I'm reminding myself that I want to transition from this and the military aspect and all this and the, the espionage aspect to, and we'll get into the Disney stuff. And then I know I, I want to get, I want to ask Jamie a little bit later as well about. The, the methods of control within the world of Disney and kind of like they have her tie this all together with what's going on now with all the pop stars and the, uh, you know, the, the, the music industry has become really tied in with this only see, I think it's recently that the music industry was tied in with the Hollywood scene. Um, you know, since like the, the, like Elvis, right. I mean, before Elvis, I guess it was, um, uh, I feel, I feel like Elvis really, really brought about the, a Hollywoodization of of music. Here we go. Is that wall right, right there? <laughs> no. Okay. By the way, that's I, that first link is the wrong one. Somebody okay. has it fooled me because that's some dude's video. But here's the actual. Um, Jimmy Stewart is in here somewhere, but it's a 20 minute clip. So we're, we're talking about on. the Laurel Canyon, the connections between Laurel Canyon. The, was it the Air Force? Was the Army? Right. Or? So this is the premier uh, movie studio in the world at the time. And it, oh. if you go up Wonderland Avenue, it's a house now that's owned by Jared Leto. So he and right. but we went to it not because I knew Jared Leto, but we drove by it, and you can still see, uh, like some of the uh, the old Air Force memorabilia at the 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 compound. It's this giant it's look, compound. It's called Lookout Mountain. Right, Lookout Mountain Studios. But now it's a house that. Jerlito lives in, but who has a pseudo cult or a self aware cult, right? He has yep. an odd music, uh, sober sobriety, <laughs> straight edge cult that he's got going. Oh, anyway, he, I'm trying not, to find the he say he's sober. He's not a he's not in like that's the, yeah, their their uh retreats are like supposedly 100% sobriety retreats. Oh, the retreats are, but he doesn't seem like he seems like he's oh, yeah. a hedonist in every way. It's Who knows? Of... Well, I can't find Jimmy Stewart uh, clip because this should be in here. It is. Here's well, uh, this is one of them. I think this is probably filmed at it, but these are Air Force recruitment films with Jimmy Stewart. Anyway, I can't find the actual yeah. Laurel Canyon film. It used to be up on YouTube, but I can't find it anymore. But right, there's right. him be doing recruitment videos for the Air Force. And uh, turns out he was actually kind of a badass. He actually he did all these missions, these secret missions, and flew in all these uh, bombing raids and whatnot. But um, before you guys go to the uh, Disney stuff, I was just going to mention that uh, John Houston, OSS, Julia Child, the famous TV cook, OSS, um, Coco Chanel, I think it was rumored to be a, a tiny mustache man spy. Um, Christopher Lee was a famous Royal RAF, uh, assassin. Uh, and I think he, he talks about this himself. <laughs> so sure. unless he's making it up, uh, you, you know, Christopher Lee, Count Dooku was actually an assassin for the British government during wartime. Um, there's rumor that, uh, Marilyn Monroe might've been a spy. She was investigated, uh, by the FBI but she also had a Department of Defense badge where she could go to Laurel Canyon Studios. Nobody knows exactly what was filmed there with her, but a lot of possibilities with her. Walt would uh, inform for the FBI as well. Everybody knows about Ian Fleming. Frank Sinatra did espionage work and informing for the FBI. Um, Lucky Luciano, the famous gangster, was uh, uh, working with naval intelligence in the U.S. to spy during World War II. Uh, so this goes on and on and on. And real quick, I'll just mention there's another famous case. I sent you the link of the woman who uh, was a model from New York. And this book is about her. Her name is Gr Griffiths is her last name. And she was recruited by the OSS to spy uh, and marry this Spanish count. She married the most the wealthiest man in Spain to spy for the OSS on the Axis powers. Sonia Wigger. So, right? 
this one? No, no. Sonia Wiegert is the Swedish. This is a woman from New York. I sent you the clip about her. A totally different story. Ah, uh, okay, yeah, yeah. She ends up becoming a princess because she's just this woman from New York who was a model, and then they recruited her into the OSS to spy on the Spanish count who was the wealthiest man in Spain at the time. Hmm. Um, but all that stuff stopped well, back then, right? Like, there's no way that there's anything like that going on now in Hollywood. <laughs> right. That's what, that's what I'm saying. Is like all of this comes out nowadays about what was going on in world war ii uh yeah. she was her last name's griffiths and she was the um countess of romanones after she married the the, the count of romanones in spain oh wow so um, well it's funny because then even you know after world war ii you've got you know you got the 50s and the 60s and then you've got this huge push of the psychedelics and the psychedelic scene um you know, Disney was associated. I mean, Disney was a huge part of right. war propaganda during World War II. Everybody's, well, maybe not everybody, but a lot of people have seen the propaganda clips of Daffy Duck right. as uh, as Mustache Man. Um, you know, just like the the goofy, like uh, you know, pay your taxes, uh, enjoy your income tax. That's never going to go away, by the way. Um, and and grow your your victory gardens to to fight the war effort and i know jamie's done a lot of research into the disney stuff is that is that your book right there jamie well i have pictures of everything you just mentioned so like on the cover you can see his on the tv donald duck is on there with the mind comp <laughs> you see that <laughs> here let me you mean, mind, you mean mind quack yeah get it and then mind quack oh come on he's come on that is was because he's a duck was a i think i get book. it but yeah. um, did you guys mention Chuck Barris? Oh, yeah. I didn't mention Chuck Barris because it's it's unclear. So oh. I was just going for people that are confirmed. But yeah, people speculate. And of course, that movie with George Clooney and Sam Rockwell is all about him being Confessions of a Dangerous Mind, um, being a, an assassin. You know about that, Tristan? Yeah. yeah, he claimed it, right? Like he actually said in his biography that seemed well, very outlandish. And then, but then he gave, a, he gave a talk saying, oh, actually, it was not true. But then people say, well, he was told to say that wasn't true. So who knows? Uh, so I have this chapter called Disney's World of Warcraft. Can you see that? Oh, here we go. And it has all the stuff you're talking about. So yeah. the day after Pearl Harbor, that's when the military took over Walt Disney Studios. They just like rolled their jeeps up into the parking lot at Burbank, and they're like, "We're um, commandeering all of these resources for the war effort." Wow. And they started pumping out propaganda cartoons. And these cartoons are so deep in um, their psychology and their symbolism. So if you're interested in this, you have to get a DVD called um, Walt Disney on the Front Lines, or you can look these up individually on YouTube. But one of the main ones that they came out with was Chicken Little. Did you ever see the old Chicken Little cartoon? Well, not pre World War II, but I've seen I've seen like a nineties. Yeah, version. so the the 1943 version of Chicken Little is all about psychology and how they the fox the smart fox uses psychology on the chickens to get them where he needs them to go and he so he can eat them. So Chicken Little is this little kid that's like the sky is falling and that's what his yeah. tagline is. Because a fox like threw a pentagram over a fence and it hit him in the head. So Chicken Little runs around saying the sky is falling. And well, the... it's amazing to me that these old Disney cartoons are all about psychological warfare. Mm -hmm. And then people think it's crazy to talk about Disney being psychological yeah. warfare. Well, it's like... It all stopped right after World War II ended. It was yeah, just done. Oh, they're, they're done. Yeah. And I was talking about Disney before they even came the even more gigantic conglomerate that they are today. Like I was talking about this before they bought Sony and Fox and Tons yeah, right. And, like, all right. That. But this is a rare picture from that DVD and it just flashes for a minute, but you can see Walt Disney drawing the mouse ears inside of a pentagram. Yeah. I was wondering what that is. So what's kinda... up with that? Right. Uh. But so you've got chicken little, you've got, um, Operation Paperclip goes into all this because here's Werner von Braun. Well, yeah, the Werner von Braun and, and the moon scientist landing. Scientist yeah. With yeah. Walt right. Disney. And so Disney was a big part of perpetuating the fake moon stuff because 
They were we working did a, with Werner Von. We Braun. did a stream on this. Yeah, D- Disney did have a big role in the moon. There was a yeah. hu- they were, they played a massive role in that and selling the idea of space travel and spe- selling the idea of oh yeah look we're gonna go to the moon and it was it's funny because. I guess the generation, the boomers who were buying into that were the same boomers who were being hit with the Disney propaganda, you know, the pro-war propaganda during the Second World War. And then I get you know, the space race was kind of an extension of the Cold War. And it was like a, you know, a massive psyop during the Cold War. And don't so, forget um, that this is when all the sci-fi got really popular, too. So Star Trek, yeah. Star Wars, all that's all coming out in the Cold War. So they started building this future myth, the mythology, the, the future mythos there in Disney. And... Yeah, it's crazy because it's still Tomorrowland. I mean, yeah, that the generation that the, the boomers raised, right? The next generation, like Disney, was there. It, it's really amazing. It's it, it's shocking to me how much of Disney is uh, has just built people's imagination. Like Disney has basically engineered people's psyche to such an extent, especially the, the our parents' generation, right? Like films like uh, Fantasia. Um, and some of those early Disney cartoons like shaped their minds. Those and then uh, and Greece, uh, Greece also. I, I blame Greece for so much of the destruction of the freaking of our parents' generations. I love you, mom, but I, I'll never watch Greece again. Um, they call it Imagineering. They literally <laughs> yeah. put it those two and two together. So you're not well. Yeah, and don't forget you know, Gregory Bateson, one of the MK Ultra doctors, talked about the need to capture. The imagination if you really want to control people he said you have to capture capture their imagination not just like their rational faculty yeah so then let's transition that to modern times right we got the disney princesses you know you got this whole generation i mean justin timberlake he's not a princess but um you know a lot of the child he's stars a mouseketeer. he's a mouseketeer the mouseketeers so what what's up with the mouseketeers and how how does that tie in with this celebrity handler thing that we're seeing um well Kanye Guess who has always been a friend of the Mouseketeers and allowed Mouseketeers to go on their campus and film things on their headquarters. The old FBI loves doing things with the Mouseketeers. Huh. Why? Well, again, Walt was an informant for the FBI. Walt worked for the FBI yeah. even before World War II because he did not know his true parentage. So there's this whole, like... Obama scandal, like where's Walt's birth certificate and how old is he and who's his true mm-hmm. uh, oh, parents? Wow. And that's weird because that's baked into so many of the Disney movies: the loss of parents, the the right. destruction of the family bond, and then the you know the evil witch coming and offering a, a deal with the devil kind of a situation to the the broken, fractured child. So he could have been the son of a Spanish woman that Elias, his dad, had an affair with, and that's why he's dark colored and dark mustache and looks very spanish and not very white uh-huh. um it could have I think been the, i think the word is sexy they use it about me <laughs> oh yeah they, they say that about me a lot on he's the internet got the sauce mm-hmm. mojo uh-huh so he was always um this was kind of a Tr- tristan is <laughs> totally like he, he didn't even react to that <laughs> look i'm not trying to hurt your feelings is all i'm saying jay like i mean it's um but this was the bargaining chip that allowed the government into his life saying, we will continue to look for your true parentage if you uh, work with us and do all the things we tell you. And I have a whole chapter in this book, which I don't sell anymore, so maybe I'll like make another book in um, the future. But he, what was I going to say? They were bribing him with, maybe we'll find your parents if you work for us. Oh, yeah. So here is all of his, like, files. He was a special agent. He worked for the Committee of Un-American Activities, spying for the government on the COO. The commies. Yeah. got to get rid of the commies, right? Uh-huh. So <clears throat> um, just like Jimmy Stewart, right? Jimmy Stewart was, uh, you know, fa- American Patriot Air Force, right? So they want him to inform off if there's, you know, commies in Hollywood, basically. Well, it's funny. Well, now all the Hollywood stars, their whole thing is, you know, they're they're still, they're trying to root out the, uh, you know, the the bigots and the the fascists and the, you know, it's like the, the social media cancel culture is kind of just an extension of the, 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 the Hollywood witch hunts that, I mean, I, I'm not saying that the McCarthy era, there weren't actual legitimate issues with communist infiltration of the government, but... You, you see the same purpose being, you know, see social media and celebrities canceling each other and, you know, yeah, right. destroying each other's reputation. Something That's what they were doing back then. Yeah. So you guys were talking about Babylon Berlin in the 20s and that era of the silent films. And 
so a lot of people back then thought that the Great Depression was some kind of consequence of this living like this. And they Hollywood was very unpopular for a short period of time until they propped up Walt Disney because he was not a J and they wanted a nice good old boy who was a non J to be like their um the face, face of the face the of the Hollywood. new Hollywood. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And so and that's why the wow, that's why the yeah. CIA helped Walt get the land and set up all this. <clears throat> yeah, and, and Walt. I mean, the, you look at the the influence, the pervasive influence of Disney now. It's like it really did. Like, did I don't know? Di- Disney just kind of represents all all of Hollywood to a certain extent now. Like Disney is the the quintessential Hollywood symbol. Yeah, I forget which all studios they bought, but I mean, they started. I mean, they acquired Miramax back in the like in the nineties. Marvel. Uh, and then they, but I'm saying the studios. Oh, Marvel's yeah. not a studio. 20th century, they got DreamWorks. Yeah, yeah. So they started just buying all the studios, and then I think the other ones are owned by China. So yeah. Well, what, what was Weinstein? Nowadays. Weinstein was under was he was DreamWorks? Miramax, I think. Is it Miramax <clears throat> Disney. Yes. Probably now. Yeah. That was a subsidiary they made so they could make corn. Uh huh. Huh. And, and that's what all features. all Tarantino's movies were always under Weinstein too. And his, I mean, his films were pretty. They pushed the envelope in a lot of ways. So the the Disney connection I've got written down here just this weird these weird connections like even like the '60s Mackenzie Phillips. Uh, I'm sure you've got a bit about her. She she said that she comes up in the Laure- the Laurel Canyon book, yeah. <laughs> yeah, because John Phillips she was addicted to cocaine and alcohol by the time she was like 11. Right, but well, she, she claims, of course, that she was passed around, right, uh-huh. by yeah. her dad. Yeah. And she was in; she was like a Disney kid. She was in Disney films. I don't know what Disney film she was in, but she started out as a child actor in Disney films. So that same, that same uh, pattern gets repeated in, in children like Britney, um, in in the the Disney kids from uh, what was it called the um, the Mickey Mouse Club, right? Bobby Driscoll was a tragedy that happened in hollywood um a young boy i think he did peter pan the voice of the old peter pan and he had a mysterious death hmm. how did he die like a tragic young i don't just look at the details of bobby driscoll but yeah he's an, an old disney victim yeah i think that uh we would be i mean obviously we can never know exactly or not, a lot of this can't be proven unless some specific thing gets out you know eventually is, is uncovered but mm. Probably a lot of stars' deaths were um, star whacked over the years that we don't that we don't know about. And of course, they can cover it up with it being a uh, overdose. Or <clears throat> I think pretty much people are you know the the David Carradine um, mm. auto uh, erotic uh, you know thing. That that's a, a sign of that you were whacked basically. All right. Well, then you've got the I mean, uh, Robin Williams. Robin Williams. Oh, what about the other guy, the the Chester Bennington and um, uh, the Chris Cornell? Both of those guys, kind of strange circumstances. Didn't Chris Cornell have like broken ribs or something? They... There was always, yeah. There was. I remember covering that on Bullet Room at the time. There were there were odd questions. I don't remember the details, but yeah. So, uh, and and I just did you see that clip? I can't remember if I sent it to you, but it just surfaced recently of. Uh, people interviewing um, Kurt Cobain, him talking about uh, human T R A F F I C K I N G. Yeah, he's on the balcony, right? The, yep. the balcony, and he he goes pretty far. And he talks about how well, all yep. the politicians in Portland are all in on this, and yep. or no, Seattle. I think it was yep. Seattle. And and he was he was being specific, but also he was trying to be a little bit discreet. But it was, uh, yeah, that's pretty crazy. So the uh, what about like Drew Barrymore? I mean, she's she's another one of these weird child stars who, surrounded by all these Laurel Canyon type people yeah, in the Spielberg um, films as so a young child. She, she comes, she's Hollywood royalty, so she she comes from a family. Um, her granddad was a famous Bauville actor who played uh, Svengali. So if you've ever seen this famous image of Swingali, right, who's doing the mind control stare, that's okay. Very, I didn't know that's that. Drew, that's Drew Barrymore's granddad. That's yeah. Um, now, I mean, that's obviously fiction, but um, you know, beyond that, I, he's an archetype of a handler. I know, right? Yeah. But what I'm saying is that um, she comes up in Dave's book, 
uh, in regard to, you know, her lineage, but I, I don't know that there's any hard evidence that, I mean, she could have been, I mean, the story is that she was, you know, partying early on when she was really young. Yeah. I mean, she was like I nine I years old. There's... I guess when right. she was filming ET, she was getting high. She said yeah. she was dropping acid as a young kid and it wasn't uh Timothy Leary, her, uh, like her god. John Barrymore, by the way, that's what I'm thinking. Go ahead. Wasn't, wasn't Tim Leary, um, like her godfather or something weird? No, that's like Winona Ryder. Okay, okay. It was a similar situation. But I think that she was, she knows and is friends with Tim Leary, but uh, let me see here. So while while Jay's she... looking that up, let me throw okay, a shout So out. here, this is, this okay. is important. Listen to this. <clears throat> Martin Starr and John Carter, Dennis Hopper and John Carradine, David Carradine's dad, were members supposedly allegedly of the Agape Lodge of the OTO alongside uh, Jack Parsons as well as Dean Stockwell. So according to um, Dave's book, allegedly uh, they were all members of the OTO. And then he goes on to say that um, according to Gregory Mank, uh, I don't know who that is, in the book Hollywood Hellfire Club, John Carradine and uh, John Barrymore, which I think would be her granddad, were also members of the Bundy Drive Boys, a group, a group that engaged in all forms of degeneracy that you could imagine. According to author Ed Sanders, who's pretty well known about his Manson stuff, uh, the ups, upscale homes visited by the Process Church were, in fact, the John Barrymore Mansion located at 11301 Summit Ridge Drive. So according to Ed Sanders and um, one of these other Hollywood occult researchers, Gregory Mank, uh, John Barrymore, who is, I think, her granddad, does have these uh, kind of shady, dark connections. Yes, it's when you deal with this stuff, you're always going to be... I mean, you're looking at, like, the world of espionage or of uh you know like shady criminal organizations mafia you're always going to be dealing with circumstantial evidence right like you, the smoking gun evidence is obviously uh, often very difficult to find but i mean when you, when you look at uh court cases very m many murder cases and, uh, and conspiracy cases are are built on circumstantial evidence so you know the, people are often looking for somebody to just out and out admit like, yes, I am a, you know, Hollywood fixer and handler and I blackmail celebrities uh, right. and I'm running an international blackmail ring involving <laughs> yeah. politicians. Um, but if you did catch those people, nobody would care because we already have the Efri. Jeff, Jeff Stein, Jeff, Meg Efri. His name is Jeff Stein. And the Get it right. Mullane Glax, whatever. Glaxo Smith Mullane. Galane Flax. Mullane's well. Swell or something. <laughs> I don't know what more evidence you could give to people. Yeah, they don't care. People don't. Because if they they're not going to. They don't remember. See it and care. Well, I mean, just the fact that like <clears throat> 20 of the most famous actors and actresses of all time have been spies. Isn't this sort of an indicator, guys, of what we've been talking about? I mean, is that not enough right there to be like, hey, wait a minute? Well, you know, part of intelligence is pattern recognition. And if you can't recognize these patterns, then you're not. Very smart. Yeah, there are no patterns. No, but, there are no patterns. Patterns are bigoted. That's like that's that, like, if, <laughs> if you recognize <laughs> patterns, that means you're a bad person. We need we need Jim Bob to come on with the uh with his uh what's his face? Um uh Shapiro. <laughs> it's a Shapiro and impression. Um so all right, so let me let me give a shout out. We we forgot to shout out our uh, our lovely sponsors over at shock.com while Jay is sending me more uh, infinite blackmail. links well, Jay, Jay's sending me more of his DMs blackmailing me and threatening me well uh, we're going to use this opportunity to shout out Chalk all you, all you bigots watching in the chat if you guys want to increase your bigotry Chalk guaranteed to increase your bigotry guaranteed to dramatically improve your levels of toxic masculinity or toxic real femininity if you are a lady uh, hit up Chalk.com for the highest quality adaptogens and natural supplements and you can use the coupon code BIG53LIFE to get 53% off all subscriptions for life over there at chalk.com, C-H-O-Q.com. I use the daily every day. I love the Shilajit as well. I got the, got the legit Shilajit right here. 
shilling the legit she legit i've got the uh the tomcat 100 is awesome the wife is really into the ashwagandha which is great for winding down at the end of the day resting getting good improved sleep so if you want to improve your hormones if you want to improve your immune system function to get your body and your brain functioning like they're designed to function hit up chalk.com, C-H-O-Q.com. You can use either Big 50 for 50% off everything store-wide or Big 53 Life for 53% off store-wide at C-H-O-Q.com. If you want to be a, a big bigot like Jay Dyer, if you want to be, uh, if you want to be a, a beautiful diva like Jay, if you want to be a legitimate researcher like his wife, who's an actual legitimate researcher, not just a just a beautiful, pretty face like Jay. Just a pretty here. face out there. Jay's just a pretty face, but you can get that you can get that face pretty like Jay by hitting up chalk.com. And uh, and yeah, so big shout out to Chalk. CHOQ.com. Use that big 53 life to get a 53% off all subscriptions for life. They're gonna deliver them to your door every month. So you don't have to think about it. You don't have to think about it, they'll just bring it right to your door. Like Harley Pasternak will bring uh, prepackaged meals to Kanye, but this will this we we promise Jenny you Craig. there will be no. Don't forget Jenny, Agent Jenny Craig too. <laughs> Agent Jenny Craig, Agent Shock will drop the, <laughs> drop them off right at your uh, right at your front door. So um, hey, by the way, uh, I know that we kind of I mentioned it in passing, but mm. we can't forget the classics like Angelina Jolie, like who openly went and got mm. CIA got CA training for her role and then joins the CFR. She becomes a member of the council on foreign relations as, as did George Clooney, who is a member of the CFR. Yep. Right. Yep. So those are the ones are, those ones are admitted. Ben's uh, not Stiller, <laughs> Ben Affleck, um, uh, Ben Affleck, Jennifer Garner. And they were a, a couple Angelina Jolie. Didn't she, was she, did she date George Clooney or something at some time or no? Because George Clooney was another one of those guys who's like, you know, I don't know if she in... ever dated him, but here, here, by the way, is uh, Angelina with the CIA woman that trained her for the movie Salt. The CIA operative Melissa Mela. That, uh, that up. there's that old interview from 12 years ago. Do you remember that Ben Affleck movie we found that we didn't watch it yet? It was called Paycheck, and it was about. He's an agent. Oh, you had seen it. I've never. It's a movie I've never seen. He's a. It's an old '90s one. Yeah, it's a '90s MK Ultra Ben Affleck movie where they erase your memories. Like he does a job yeah. and then they erase his memories. Yeah. Of what he did. So maybe that would be a fun one to do. Well, and I think you know, as a result of the things that have kind of been uh, admitted with Ben Affleck, people have kind of started looking at other potential celebrity connects in this regard, like Matt Dadbod, right? Or Matt Damon, I should say. I mean, they're, they're all kind of I doing think... similar types of things. Um, so I think that probably people like Jessica Chastain with her, you know, her, her role in zero dark 30, which is an openly CIA made movie. Um, uh, who else? In, any of these kinds of roles, you know, you could, include people who who may or may not be also working in this capacity right mm -hmm. well oh you know you know it's another strange a little a weird phenomena that you see with a lot of these hollywood elite uh or you know throwaway slaves which however you want to see them um angelina jolie who we just mentioned uh the kardashians uh, uh luke skywalker um uh Let's see, Clueless, uh, Game of Thrones, all of these stars or films have a, a, a very strong presence of like, uh, I guess, well, we're on YouTube, I think you could say is incest, right? Like the, the incestual relations um, being pushed through Hollywood, through the music industry, and Angelina Jolie is one of these weird people, she's got this weird relationship with her brother, and there's all these weird I remember pictures. when she Frenched him on the red carpet back in the 2000s. So what the heck's up with this? Why are we I, don't, I don't know. About, I, didn't, yeah. I didn't actually know about oh, this. Oh, yeah. Dude, there's Thanks. a bunch of pictures of her like open mouth kissing I'm not her doubting it. Yeah, I just, I just didn't know about it. It's crazy. And he she, looks like he, a man version of her, but taller. And they just were like making out at an award. So day. basically beautiful, like me. Uh-huh. Okay. Yeah. She's getting mad. She's getting annoyed. She's getting annoyed she, that you're so beautiful. She gets mad when I talk about diva status because... She wants to be the real I'm diva. Is that. there like a diva struggle in in the in the relationship? Like who wants I mean, to be the most? Maybe that's what's going on. Maybe there's yeah. 
Is it's it because just, Jamie? Is it because I complimented Jay's pretty face earlier? Uh, I'm jealous of you and Tristan's relationship, actually. Our relationship. You no, wanna, you want to rip burn on for... Jay? All you want to insult burn. Jay? Yeah. Burn. Guy. <laughs> you burned us. That's... All you do is get on here and call each other beautiful and wonderful. And... <laughs> 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 All right, Jamie wins the burn competition. I gotta get then. my diva glasses now. So <laughs> there we go. All right, official you diva status. Jay, you got that? You got them Elvis glasses. Exactly. My mama once told me. But what what's up with the incest stuff? Like this is like all around Hollywood. You got the uh, the Kardashians had this strange. There was like this public Twitter engagement with uh with like one of the Kardashian girls because her brother publicly said that he had a crush on her and she made this Ugh. tweet like incest is f good or some weird like it was she was joking but not joking. So this is yeah this is trauma right? Mm -hmm. If it, to what degree this exists in these. Hollywood royalty families and many of them claim it does is to traumatize the kids and acclimate them to this life. Well, the, all of this stuff, this occult stuff too, comes um, down through like royals and those kinds of people who partake in keep it in the family. Yeah, right. Uh, even to the point where some of the kings and stuff are like super slow boy. Yes, like a lot. Not of the just Spanish slow boy, super royalty. slow boy, super slow boy. Right. And what was I going to say about incest? Like super oh, slow yeah. boy. So some people were watching Seventh Heaven. Do you remember that show? Yeah, yeah. And the dad from that got in trouble for CP. What? And being, yeah, the big tall actor. I forget his name. But the dad from Seventh Heaven and Jessica Biel was on that show. And the very first episode is the brother and sister, like the sister's trying to convince the brother to teach her how to kiss. Like, what? So they, I mean, they they push this hard. I mean, the most the most iconic films for like nerds is Star Wars and the whole Leia Luke thing. You know, they had the same. They did the same thing in Game of Thrones. Well, a, a lot of that I think is that Hollywood was big on for many decades, not just using Carl Jung's archetypes, but using Freudianism. So Freudianism comes up in a lot of Hollywood movies, and I think you know Freud touched on this. Uh, you know. Uh, Oedipus complex and then the Electra complex and the the wh whatever the other complexes are so that this is because of the influence of psychoanalysis and Freudianism in Hollywood as well but the interesting thing about that and I read this in that one book that we did the show C.S. Uh, Lewis, C. S. Lewis in, versus uh, Freud Freud is that he was getting so many reports of yep. um M-O-L-E-S-T yeah and so, incest from the parents right. that he thought that the kids were making it up and ritual yeah. abuse right so he's like this can't be a thing because it just can't and he's like well the kids are making up and that's where oedipus complex and electra complex comes from which oh, wow. kids Literally were actually covering up the abuse that was happening. cases of yeah. abuse yeah. and he's like no that's not true you're making it up. that's so just that's I, I don't think that sounds plausible so i'll make yeah. up a so whole crazy like, thing about it so he makes up this thing like all uh boys have this uh yeah. thing towards their mother and yep. all of that Kenzie type stuff right yeah. before Kenzie yeah yeah but I mean all these I mean I mentioned Mackenzie Phillips earlier she said that John right. Phillips like, she was abused as a child by by her father right. and she was one of these Disney kids and they're they're highly connected within the music and uh, industry and Hollywood as well um, so the the abuse and the trauma but then that concept of like um, trauma bonding seems to be really big and you this, maybe this is yes. why all these like the the anti panty club or whatever back in the, like those were all just a bunch of little abused girls who were, you know was, what was it Britney and Lindsay Lohan and these other child stars and they they're acting and Bay's Paris Hilton don't forget Bay's Paris Hilton I know yeah well Paris Hilton <laughs> who was recently revealed to be quite based on the uh, on the HQ on the, on the, uh, the homosexual she's gotten in trouble a lot for her comments which is funny yeah but her sister I think her sister got got it a lot worse in many ways the was it Nikki Hilton because she got she got really skinny I mean the picture you showed earlier right like she mm -hmm. seems like she she acted out in a way that was more self-destructive than well, Paris ja did Jamie watched that whole documentary on Paris Hilton and didn't you say that they forced her into some weird boarding school that was like mind control or something oh yeah like the, it's one of those schools where they you're so bad they come and kidnap you in the middle of the night and take you to a different state to a property out in the middle of nowhere and oh, you're just there 
<laughs> this is a real thing. I had a friend. I had a friend in high school. My buddy's uh, girlfriend. That they did this to her, and when she came back from this weird kind of, you know, military reform style school. reform school, she was all into burning sage and doing banishing stuff. Oh, so they they teach them kind of new agey witchy yeah. stuff there. Yeah, how to regulate your energy. You to but according them. to her, t- her documentary, it was very abusive. Like mopping floors cinderella stuff like it sounded like mk ultra type punishments isolation mm-hmm. being locked up for days at a time 24 hours in the dark room or whatever Dang. and so this is where she said she got it in her mind that if she ever had a billion dollars that no one could ever do anything like this to her again so that's why she has been working so hard and it's never enough because she feels so unsafe and like a billion dollars is her uh safety net or something does she is her dad still alive or has she inherited the hilton uh, for, fortune interesting so, oh yeah, uh, that, that trauma the trauma programming in like these uh the boarding schools and then there's this other phenomenon of the the rehabs right like there's this whole yes. industry about troubled right. teens and like you know and all this stuff now and uh, and these rehabs seem to be a weird place too isn't one of them called not wonderland or what is it's that? something like that. I know what you're talking there's about. There's crossroads. There's yeah. promises. Right. There's you're right. There's all these rehabs, and that's what Brittany went through. The whole revolving door of the the rehabs in the uh, Caribbean, rehabs yep. in Malibu, rehabs here and there, and they're just probably reprogramming centers. Yeah. And then Kanye actually, he was like saying a bunch of stuff a long time ago, and then he had to go to rehab. Remember that? Yeah. Yep. With the Trump stuff. Remember that? Yeah. Yep. No. Well, this yeah. is what Kanye was saying that Harley Pasternak is the guy that got him yep. committed, and he got right. he got him. I guess he's in L.A., so it would have been fifty one fifty law. He he got the doctor. He got uh, Harley Pasternak got uh, Kanye's doctor to call the police on him, and there's a recording of the phone call, um, and they they get him committed. And then they leak it to the press and tell the press that Kanye's crazy. Kanye got committed. There's this really creepy video of um, TMZ well, following Pasternak yeah. around. He's walking around outside his house for what, for like no reason at all. You know, this is a multimillionaire celebrity trainer. Uh, you know, I think of like a dog trainer. It's like more like a Pavlovian trainer, it seems. And um, he he's walking around the, and, and TMZ's following him, asking him questions like, hey, is Kanye okay? Like, what's going on? And there's like five cameramen behind him, and he's just walking around his block for no reason at all. It was very strange. But yeah, he got him committed and sent to the rehab. And that's why Kanye is still pissed, because he, he was pointing this out. Like, if you step out of line, they will send you to, uh, yeah. you know, they'll get you committed, right. they'll send you a rehab, they'll force drug you, and they'll force you to do all this public shaming ritual stuff to, uh, to get you back in line. And this was something, by the way, uh, that has come up in many other cases. Remember all the Rose McGowan stuff? She related that she had been followed by these private security people, harassed because of what she was saying about like Weinstein and these kinds of things. And so all of that came out in all of Rose McGowan's revelations in the last two years. She was even on Tucker doing a whole big thing about it. Uh, and she said, oh, Hollywood is a giant cult. <laughs> so like she, mm-hmm. she revealed all that, which is again, something that we had talked about for years, including about Rose McGowan. So it was, it was, it's amazing to hear the stars themselves come out and say all this stuff when we, it's been theorized for so long. And, and don't forget that, uh, just real quick, there's also fictional presentations of this theme too, that you're talking about with trauma bonding. If you remember in the uh james bond um the one with uh um uh, pierce brosnan uh the one with with, with uh, sophie marceau where she plays electra king she has the electra complex and she's trauma bonded to her dad she's the heiress to this billion dollar uh oil fortune but she's also really into bdsm types of things and she wants to trauma bond with bond trauma bond literally in the movie uh yeah. and and so she utilizes actually a lot of mk ultra techniques that she learned from her dad uh because she she runs this former kgb terror guy uh and she's trauma bonded with him and she's she's his handler yeah. so spoiler alert that's the whole revelation and um i think the world's not enough i think so that's the, that's what i'm thinking of um 
but that, that's so that's that's actually the theme in that whole uh, James Bond story is what we're talking about, ironically. And she's a celebrity, like in the storyline, she's a billionaire heiress. By the way, she's Orthodox. Hmm. Get this, she's Orthodox. She's an Orthodox oil heiress, evil Bond villainess, <laughs> who is mind controlling and trauma bonding everybody. Isn't that crazy? So they're connected. If she's Russian. No, she's uh, Azerbaijani in the in the story. And so at the beginning of the movie, she goes and like uh, there's an Orthodox bishop who's uh, mad because they want to put a pipeline that will go through an Orthodox shrine. And the Azerbaijani and Orthodox people are there protesting it. And she she lands in her, her billion dollar you know helicopter or whatever. And she comes out there and she uh, puts on her Orthodox uh, head covering and goes and like, you know, salutes the shrine and says, we would build the pipe around the shrine. Mm -hmm. and so everybody loves her and she's like, oh, yes. But she's actually this, you know, this evil, you know, Klaus Schwab, Blofeld villainess who's, <laughs> uh, who's, by the way, she's bombing her own pipelines. So think about Nord Stream pipeline. Yeah. She bombed her own pipeline in the storyline. Well, the Russians pipeline. bombed their own pipeline there, clearly. This is in the world is not enough. I mean, this is crazy. I forgot. I've seen that. I just didn't. I didn't you, you, you should definitely go back and watch. It. I did a whole uh, podcast on it uh, like two years ago. So, mm -hmm. but yeah, it's it's a it's an important one. But it also has that Freudian element of trauma bonding through, uh, through trauma um, and its parent child relationship. And hence, she her name is Electra because she has Electra complex. Go ahead. I'm sorry. I don't mean to. Um, I was just gonna kill throw the two, vibe. two more names into that. <laughs> Thanks for apologizing. Yeah, if you could just apologize after okay, everything I, you say, I, I'm that would trying be really not great. to kill the vibe every time. No, I just see it, any, right? anytime you talk, just just go ahead and apologize. I I'd appreciate that. Um, yeah. I've gotten used to it. So. <laughs> Try to come out and say stuff. Oh yeah, uh, did he talk about trauma bonding? So there you can see. That. Oh yeah, that's the one with uh, Charlie Sheen's wife. Yeah, um, Denise Richards. Denise Richards and Sophie Marceau, exactly. And Elijah Wood, a long time ago, tried to come out and say stuff like that, and they shut him down. Oh, did he? Yeah. Yeah, he did. No, he said all the... I knew about Corey, but I didn't know about... I forgot about Elijah Wood. Yeah, yeah Corey Feldman. And Sam! And Sam! Is that how he said it? Yeah. <laughs> what was it? What was it? Haim? The, uh, Corey, Corey Haim, right? It was Corey, Fel yeah. Corey Feldman and Corey Haim. Elijah Wood. I mean, so so many of these people have come out and and openly talked about this, but it's still no. This is this is crazy. Like this is not normal. This is just outliers, right? These are just outliers. Um, but it's like I mean, Weinstein. The Weinstein. That's a really obvious one. That's just right in front of everybody. This guy telling actresses, if you don't do what I tell you to do, and you know whatever, satisfy me in this way, then you're not going to work. Now, I mean, I'm not, I don't mean to downplay that one, but I kind of feel like the Weinstein thing got a lot of attention because it would detract, distracted from a lot of the PEDO stuff. Oh, yeah. Because they, they were able, they were able to turn that into, quote, me too, and just this dumb feminist stuff. Yeah. Um, because what's his face is still around? Uh, Dan Schneider, right? Lou Pearlman and Dan Schneider. Some of these people are like, nothing ever happened to those guys. Like, where's Dan Schneider right now? He's just, He's probably still working. I don't know. Good question. But yeah, there, I mean, there, there's even a documentary about how all the boy band stuff, that was all just like those creepers, right? There's the Lou Pearlman guy, right? Like they were behind was, all the boy bands. Yeah. Yeah. And but, a, bunch of, a bunch of creepers. Well, Pearlman was, uh, wasn't he the, he managed Britney. And then also all the, a lot of those other. Oh, I didn't know that. I, th I I could be wrong, but I thought he was like, he managed Britney and then also the NSYNC and, and those type of guys at the same time. Like a lot of those, uh, what are they called? The uh, the Disney kids, um, the uh, the Mickey Mouse Club kids. Mm. But yeah, that would make sense that Weinstein would just be kind of a distraction. And I think you know they did kind of get thrown to the wolves, almost kind of sacrificially. And now it's like, oh, the problem's gone in Hollywood. Hollywood's all good now. Let's just go back to pumping they, propaganda. Yeah, they act like it's just a couple bad apples that you <clears throat> can get out, and then the but it's systemic. Yeah. Another element that is uh, overlooked that not many people have ever talked about or discussed is, do you remember how a lot of the people that have undergone a lot of these Hollywood celebrities, they go through a phase where they convert to Islam? Have you noticed this? Mm -hmm. So Liz, Lindsay Lohan uh, had her what? phase where she, be yeah, she became a Muslim. 
Um, Janet, Jackson. Janet Jackson converted to Islam. Um, I don't know if Princess Di converted, but she was dating, you know, what's his face? Dodi Fayed. Dodi Fayed, Muslim. who's the Muslim. Muhammad Ali. Um, but yeah, but specifically like recent ones that. Um, Who else well, recently? Uh, when did Lindsay Lohan? Well, Tate she, converted his own. Did she stop acting like a you know deranged? Um, uh, you Lindsay Lohan. Yeah. Did she like stop acting like a freak? Maybe now that she's not in the spotlight as much, maybe she's more sobered up. I haven't really kept up with her, but like she was having all these same kinds of breakdowns, and you know. Did she publicly she... talk about her conversion? When she claimed to have converted, yeah, but I mean, you know, who knows if that was just a phase or what? Or, Sinead O'Connor, uh, remember Sinead O'Connor? Someone mentioned her in the chat. She yeah. did. She oh, great one. Yeah, she was she serious. Convert. She seemed like she, she converted was serious to, about it. She seemed yeah to have been a serious convert too. Good point. I forgot about her. Lindsay Lohan was in contact with Al Gore. You remember that? Oh no. Oh yeah. What were well, a lot doing? of the celebrity, a lot of the celebrities are like you have know weird. Well, they work contacts. for the Democrat. They work for the Democratic Party. Yeah. But he and yeah, we talked about Tate. We did a whole whole live stream on Tate converting. And then Kanye was talking about Kim Kardashian relationship with the Clintons. Yes. And how they can call her up and tell her what to do. Did you hear that? Yep, yep. He said they got her to push the uh, the happy, healthy, mandatory medicines, and they were trying to get her to get Kanye to push it to the black community, and he didn't want to. He and then Obama and Jay Z and Beyonce are besties oh don't forget mike tyson who supposedly has gotten interested in or converted to islam oh yeah um, he said he converted that was in the 90s right and he still says that he's like into it but he i mean he makes up his own islam basically <laughs> right so a lot of these people do that right so uh janet jackson there's pictures of her i don't know if she's still serious but when she married a muslim dude she's wearing her hijab dave Chappelle supposedly was interested in it ice cube snoop dogg uh omar epps so uh, that they probably try to package it to like you know black celebrities like the way that when people go to jail like they'll they'll try to package islam to black dudes in jail well that's the five percent um, nation stuff yeah exactly have, like, well i know that's not real islam but yeah, yeah. no yeah they're like weird the, f the five percent nation of islam is it's not they have some of the doctrines from the nation of islam like they call you know white people the devil white right. white devils and stuff like I mean, even like the Ghostface Killer, his name is <laughs> like white person killer. Well, there's Ghostface yeah, there's overlap. White person, like there's overlap with the the Nation of Islam and the the five percent stuff and Black Hebrew with, Israelites with Black Hebrew Israelites and uh, Rasta stuff, which which is also influenced by Black Hebrew Israelite stuff. Mm -hmm. And so a lot of people in the music scene who get into the either into to reggae or that kind of stuff, they're influenced by uh bizarro uh, black hebrew, hebrew is like so that's partly where ice cube and i think kanye have gotten some of these ideas even kyrie Not all irving yeah he posted something about like uh, it was some video about like blacks are the real israelites or something yeah. and that's what he was you know he got jay shamed for that and now he has to apologize to the adl and like and go through sensitivity training did you see the list that they gave him there's like six I did points. oh yeah I i'm really that. curious like what, what's who exactly is the source of where the the celebrities are getting the black hebrew israelite stuff because i know this is coming from there's somewhere farrakhan but it's like there's i mean farrakhan gives a similar thing but i think it's i don't know man because uh a lot of the Wu-Tang guys are into it too. A lot of the 5% Nation people, they mix the 5% Nation and the Black Hebrew Israelite stuff. And you listen to Wu-Tang, it's in there. Like uh, uh, the Wu uh, Killer Priest, he has like he has uh, that song on the, the Jizza album, Your Liquid Swords. Uh -huh. And there's that song called B-I-B-L-E, Basic huh. Instructions Before Leaving Earth. And it's like, that was my first exposure to all the Black Hebrew Israelite stuff. Because in that is like some line of like, the, the oh, wow. white Caesar. I didn't know. I didn't know. I mean, I, I, he's like I, the white Christ is really Caesar Borgia, the second son of Pope Alexander. Is oh, like one wow. of the lines in this track, <laughs> and it, the whole thing. It's all just lays out the black Hebrew Israelite stuff, and then mixes it a little bit with like Nation of Israel, uh, the Nation of Islam stuff. It's yeah. like the real blacks. Like the uh, there's, I forget some of the lines, but I, it's like a really catchy track, and it's 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 a pretty popular like '90s. Wu Tang, yeah, yeah, album. Yeah. Wow. So they, yeah, Killer Priest was really into that stuff, and 
Rizzo got real into the na- 5% nation. Like Rizzo wrote this book. I remember the, the Wu-Tang manual and the Wu-Tang manual came out in like 2007 or something. And it's, it basically lays out the whole 5% nation belief in this thing of like the gods and the earths. And it's like this weird new age cosmic, um, yeah. fake Islam like the real Muslims say that these guys are, you know, that this stuff is nonsense. And even Malcolm X, he left the Nation of Islam and became like a. Yeah, uh, I I did an interview with a friend of mine. We did a whole, I think, two hours on Nation of Islam. Uh, oh, nice. About seven years about seven years ago, which is a really cool interview. If anybody wants to check it out, but do you remember what it was called? Uh, it may be a subscribers only thing, but it's about seven years old. It's just, if you type in J Dyer nation of Islam, it probably is still up there, but we went pretty deep. We spent about two hours on it. And then, um, but, uh, I've, I've only recently kind of looked a little bit at the Rasta reggae culture, which obviously influences a lot of, um, celebrities and that theology is really wild too. They have a, a lot of wild stuff going on. And they were all, they're kind of like the Hebrew Israelites of like 300 years ago. <laughs> like they were saying that we're the real, you know, if, cause if you listen to reggae, right. You know, it's all about how we're Zion, everybody else is Babylon. We're the true Israelites. And yeah. it, it's a, it's a bizarre Judaized uh, anti-Trinitarian kind of cult thing. But it, my understanding is a lot of modern day, there's different groups of uh, Rasta people. Some of them have moved more towards Coptic Orthodoxy. This is the source of why a lot of people say that, Bob Marley converted to orthodoxy before he the died. The priest, that Coptic priest, like showed this certificate and said, like, yeah. no, he did convert. And this, right. And, yeah. But, the, but, uh, Coptic orthodoxy is, is different than Rasta. Rasta is this weird, just mix of a bunch of different things. But well, it yeah, has hi, a lot of- they believe that Haile Selassie yes. was Christ's return, right? Is that what they say? Yeah, some of them think that, but but they have these. There's like sect amongst them, sex amongst them, and oh. some of them have gotten closer towards Coptic Orthodoxy, yeah. as I understand. And then some of them are are more of the so called whatever, but they don't really have a theology. That's the other thing too. Uh, it's not like they don't have like a list of dogmas that you can go read. It's just kind of this weird simplistic thing. I feel like I remember Jay Z getting mixed up in this five percent stuff. Yeah, well, that's why Beyonce was doing her. Uh, remember, her Super Bowl was like they were marching like BLM style. Yeah, and and she was doing masks like with just the eyes cut out, like hijab style fashion. Well, I don't think Nation of Islam makes. They don't do that. They don't. No, oh. do it's they not even Islam. cover their heads in Nation of Islam. I'm not sure. It's a good question. So a lot of people think Nation of Islam. They're fooled by that title. This is a totally made up. It's an alien cult. Yeah, yeah people don't. They people have, don't know. It's alien you look cult up. Sure. So Farrakhan has these talks about the mothership. Yeah, he and is this, Scientology connected. There's a strong Scientology right. connected with Nation of Islam, but that came about later. I think the Scientology connection meshed in like the 70s with Farrakhan, right? Uh. That would I would think so because if you so Elijah Muhammad is the founder of the Nation of Islam and he was a weird PEDO who he thought that he and he thought he was a prophet right yeah. so he claimed he was a prophet. He well, he's, like, didn't he say that he was Muhammad like the return like Muhammad returned or something or Christ or he he had some weird yeah he was like, like a probably, reincarnated that right. prophet that he yeah, claimed so he, something like that. And he came up with this space theology uh, that is racial, where white people are the devils, and it's, so it's it's a literal like you know space theology. That's why Farrakhan. You can find lectures of him talking about. I have seen the mothership. The mothership is over our country right now, and he he will make these apocalyptic uh, pronouncements about the alien attack. That's come. I'm not joking. This is all this is all really out there, but. The mothership, that's where P Funk gets all their mother mothership theology from. Mm. And then they influenced a lot of the like uh the nineties rappers. rappers. Yeah. And, and like uh, what's his name? Um uh, not uh, KRS one. KRS one was really into yeah. the Elijah Muhammad stuff. And then all the white the kids got influenced by him and like the like even like sub you remember Sublime, the band the band Sublime? Yeah. He had that we whole were just song listening like, to Yeah. Because they do the cover of the because of KRS One, you know that song, and they cover uh, Pete Tosh, who is uh, Stepping Super Razor. Duper. Yeah, yeah, exactly. 
You said, I mean, it's crazy. But, how but much Pete Tosh was a was a serious Rasta dude. Like he was serious about his Rasta. Yeah, yeah. And then it's for like Bradley Knoll of Sublime. Just he he just took bits and pieces from all these weird influences and kind of meshed. He was a Southern California guy too. He was from like Orange County, so he just and Jamie him likes in. Sublime. She, Jamie is all the California people always they always sing Sublime to me and yeah, because they're Sublime. from Long Beach or something. So that's really yeah. Nice. Well, I mean, Sublime, it's like where I grew up liking Sublime is like a personality trait in, in certain circles. Oh, yeah. Like there's yeah. like it's liking Sublime and liking Blink-182. That was like those are that's like a personality trait. You have a certain type of truck and a certain type of sticker on your truck. And you lift it in a certain way as well. It's, it's all part of it. And the Cottonmouth Kings, Cottonmouth Kings also. It was like another Southern California Inland Empire. Um all right. Well, dude, we've... Yeah, I think I think a lot of these uh, uh, black-related cults are just as COINTEL-fed uh, controlled types of things as we see with the uh, far-right types of cults. That's an interesting deep dive to do because I've, I've shallow-dived on the Nation of Islam and like the, uh, what's his, uh, Malcolm X and, um, and some of these groups, but that would be an interesting topic to just really zoom in on is the history of the manipulation like the theological manipulation and the cultural manipulation of the black culture through yeah it's still up it's if you type in nation of islam jay dyer you get the cult series from seven years ago so it's still available nice. if you're looking for our our podcast on it i'll put it in the chat for you <clears throat> i mean it's just crazy in every single one of these there's also um you know, it's just speaking about like mind control and like black community, the Black Panthers. We, everyone knows about the COINTEL Pro with the Panthers, but uh, Huey <clears throat> Huey Newton, um, Huey Newton, when he was in prison, he was talking to all these Stanford guys, not Stanford, um, the, the UC Santa Cruz guys, um, who the, the same guys who developed these professors, I forget the guy's name, who developed NLP, Neuro Lingu Linguistic Programming, at the History of Consciousness program in the University of California, Santa Cruz. Uh, they gave him a PhD, like he studied at Santa Cruz, and he started studying when he was in prison. Um, and he, when he came out of prison, then he started dressing like a pimp and became super flamboyant. And he really did develop the rapper aesthetic. And then also he was like this focal point for a lot of the uh, intellectual and even theological stuff that went and later influenced the, uh, the gangster rap movement and the huh. like hip hop movement. So I, he, he was like a, a weird character. And you look at... He there's theses. Oh, so this is where we get like public enemy in their like, you know, like their their uh politicized rap, basically. This kind of stuff. Yeah, it does seem yeah, like something remember, happened when he went to prison. Remember in the nineties when rap first came out or like the eighties? Eighty, it was fun. It was like fun rap. Kind of innocent, like parents just don't understand. Yeah, fun rap. And then it became gangster rap influenced by the people that Tristan's talking about. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, it's 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 uh it's a weird transition. Who was it that, that came out? Testimony about the guy who went to the rapper party, and they're like, "We want to fill the prisons, so we're gonna pay the rappers to sing." Well, it's no, it's a, it's MTV executives allegedly mm -hmm. had the meeting to promote gangster rap. Well, yes. the, who was it that said that? Because they had a pretty elaborate story of like they were sat down in this room with these record execs. And yeah, they basically it's a famous said, thing. You could, it's a there's a Business Insider article on it. Uh, and oh, Professor Griff. Remember he? Yeah, Professor Griff talks about it. Yeah, someone mentioned Jim Jones, People's Temple cult. You know, another weird thing about Jim Jones is he was like an orderly in this hospital when he was a young kid in high school, and then when he was in his like middle age phase before he started getting before like they went to um, French Guyana and stuff, he would always have to go to doctors at the hospital, and they would. Uh, he had these breakdowns. He would have these like psychological breakdowns all the time from stress and he would get hernias and uh, ulcers throughout his body. But there's this story about like his wife, I forget her name. She had this weird name and she would inject him and he said it was B12 shots and she would always get like when he would yeah, start that's freaking what I was out. Talking yeah. about her right. That's what made me think about it earlier when you mentioned the B12 thing. So it's like, you know, what's weird, too, is before these shows, like, Jay's always getting injected by Jamie, and she always tells us it's a B12 shot. She's like, Jay needs his medicines. He needs his B12 <laughs> shots. Just it's kind of weird. 
That's my bitch number twelve. Yeah. Makes me into a bitch. That's a little bit. <laughs> Make me bitchy. Need I need your my bitch twelve. Shots. <laughs> By the way, I found that article, so I put it, the link there. It, it, it's apparently uh, an anonymous source. So, um, but it's a letter uh, that is cited by uh, Business Insider, and then the whole letter is over here at some hip hop website. So, Business Insider. Whoa. Former music executive, executive describes a scary meeting about uh, today's violent rap music. I would say that's probably true. That would be my guess. Well, it's funny because they're so mad at Kanye. Oh, Kanye, like you're, the words you're saying, you're literally going to, you, 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 silence is violence. You got to stand up and, and speak for the poor victims of Kanye's hate speech. But it's like, dude, all, all these rappers and stuff that are disavowing him, they rap about killing each other all the time. Like they're, they're well, literally they, yeah, causing this was a big, this was a big controversy when, um, fake right wingers and pol politicians were, uh, I remember that's a famous image of Tipper and Al Gore throwing away, uh, the albums of two live crew and burning them publicly because they were a danger to the youth. And at that time, all of the, uh, MTV crowd and everybody was supporting and standing up for, <laughs> free speech and that rappers and, and rap music had total free speech to do whatever they wanted. This is a famous image of, of Tipper and Al Gore burning rap albums. Yeah. And then, uh, but now, Oh, so it's not really about free speech and it never was. And of course the whole thing itself of Al Gore burning rap albums. I mean, how ridiculous is that? Yeah. Did you watch, did you see the, um, Rick Rubin interview with, uh, with Rogan? Did you see it? No, I heard everybody talking about it, but I didn't see it. Yeah, well, I didn't realize how influential Rick Rubin was, and it's just oh, like, yeah. do you oh, look, yeah. every, freak, he developed Def the hip-hop right? sound. Like, there wouldn't, the, the rap, the the hardcore rap sound that you hear, and the, the production style, and right. all this was really developed by Rubin, who's, right. uh, you know, he's, he's not a black dude, <laughs> right? You know, you're, you're, uh, he, he, he's not a black guy. He's from, um, from New York, and he was he like- He looks you know, like uh, ZZ Top. Yeah, it looks like he's got this wizard vibe, and he but he produced like Red Hot Chili Peppers, Blood Sugar, Sex Magic album, right. and they moved into this place in Laurel Canyon there, and they lived there together. And there's one of the pictures that's in the album. There's a picture of like an orb over Anthony Kiedis, and that's it's not modified. Like they said, they took this picture, and they're like, "Oh, look, bro, there's like a spirit. Whoa, trippy." Um, so they put that <laughs> in the album art. But yeah, Ruben's. Ruben's got a wild history, right? And he is not, um, he developed the whole rap sound. He's produced Jay Z, he's produced Kanye, he produced um, like a lot of the big rap albums of the 90s. And he was really into developing some of these, like, uh, I forget what the, the sub genre was, but it was like real hardcore stuff. There's Rick Rubin right there. You can you can check Rick Rubin's early life section to confirm your suspicions, but like he's you know this guy was involved in all the production of all the '90s sounds from rap and rock. He 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 did the stuff with um, was it when Aerosmith "Walk This Way" with Run DMC? Oh yeah, he did that. So so he he gave us the the worst genre of all time, rap rock uh, yeah. combos. That's like the worst thing. <laughs> Is he responsible uh, then for Limp Biscuit too, by extension, which is also one of the worst We could things. blame Rick Rubin for Limp Biscuit. We absolutely <laughs> can. But what's weird is he's transitioning. He got into all this, like, he started producing for, like, indie bands and Americana-type bands and kind of signing them. Like, he did uh, Band of Horses and some of these other kind of more, like, uh, like indie bands, um, the Avid Brothers, and he started focusing on Americana style. But he did Johnny Cash's American series in the 90s, which were like, those are great albums. So it's like, it sucks that the know that Rick Rubin did, you know, some of Johnny Cash's best work. Um, but yeah, he's, he's a strange character. And another one of these kind of, he's in a transcendental meditation. He's sober. But he's recording with all these artists who are blown out of their mind on coke and heroin and booze and what you know hookers and all this stuff. So he he's a weird character. I forget why he came to mind. He came to mind because of the rap. He he's really instrumental in developing the rap sound. Like he right. he, he did uh, and gangster rap, especially. gangster rap. And he right. was a big defender of gangster rap. He was like, "This is great. It's art. I love it. It's edgy," you know. So he kind of. Um, helped champion that with the record labels too because he was kind of renegade from his story he was kind of a little bit more renegade he was like i want to sign these rappers i want to produce this 
And the record labels were like, that's not even music. And he was like, yeah, no, no, it's music, man. I, I can do this. I'll show you. And he produced a bunch of hits for him. He did Jay-Z's 99 Problems, that track, which is like really popular. Um, well, now we have Cringecore, right? So, I mean, people are debating now, is this music? Um, I think I've proven it is. So That's what I was getting to. I was like, right. like, I'm thinking if I grow my beard out and I get real creepy, I was thinking you maybe can I could produce my album. <laughs> your album. Yeah. And we're going to actually just dial down, just dial back the creepy a little bit, like maybe from a 10 down to a five. <laughs> okay. yeah. and then, then you can Different produce. Creepy. <laughs> yeah. I was thinking we can rent. Uh, Who was that? Uh, we'll rent Jeffrey Epstein's Island and we'll produce it there. We'll, Who's we'll that be... guy from the nineties? It was, they had the big murder trial with the big wacky, crazy hair, the crazy producer. Remember him? Oh the yeah. Rock. The Beatles producer. He produced. Yeah. Pro is he a Beatles producer? I remember that oh, trial. Like a short guy. He murdered, murdered someone. <clears throat> yeah, he went. Uh, he's on trial. It was a. It was one of those televised uh, OJ style trials, right? Phil Spector, yeah. Jethro in the chat, just said. Spector. That's who I'm trying to. Yeah, he's another weirdo background music person, right? Yeah, controller person of music. Well, exactly. My favorite rapper has all of the classic MK Ultra. Oh yeah. I mean, look at that, that dude. Young Boomer, your favorite rapper. Look yeah. at that. That, look looks at like a, that looks like a freaking Photoshop meme right there. That's insane. That looks like, yeah, like <laughs> your grandmother, right? Dude, he looks like he's about to go <laughs> talk about ancient aliens on the History Channel. Bro, he that looks, looks like, like he's Jordan about Max. to. No, he, he looks, looks like, like he's, a, he's a. He looks like a grandma that's about to cook biscuits, dude. <laughs> he looks like uh, Jordan Maxwell mixed with like Terrence McKenna. <laughs> <laughs> with an afro. <laughs> like a giant psychedelic afro. <laughs> What? He's got to show a guy an out. No, that's not that's, real. That's the, there you go. That's even better. Right? <laughs> that, that, that one's exaggerated. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, if I get my hair like that or just buy a wig, it'll take a long time to, to grow out my, and get it permed. But yeah, then I can. Is he the Beatles manager? I don't remember what he did. No, he produced. Right. He's a producer, not Produced, that's what I meant. But you know, Savile was like a, he managed a couple tours for the Beatles and that, that's been kind of wiped. If you try to find that information now, that's mm -hmm. not on the internet anymore. They've kind of de de uh, they've de, de loused all that stuff about his connections with um, with the Beatles and with these type of people. But what Jamie, you were saying you have a fa well, who's your favorite rapper other than Lil Aids oh, and Young Boomer? Eminem. Oh, okay. He has all of the signs of an MMA Oh, ultra. he has the breakdowns and the claim to be abused by a priest. Remember all that? About I didn't MMA? hear him claim to be abused by a priest. That makes and sense. Yeah, he claims he was uh, molested. You know, you know what I mean. What yeah. kind of priest? Roman Catholic. So he went to a Roman Catholic church when he was a kid? Uh, I mean, I'm going from memory. I'm pretty sure that's what Eminem claims. But he's got videos about multiple personalities yeah. and devil's talking to him. He's yeah. got a whole rap song that he raps back and forth. With well, and devil. he's had these breakdowns and right. suppose, yeah, these, these big celebrity breakdowns. He's things. got Eminem, Slim Shady, Marshall Mathers, all of the different alters. alters. Oh, well, that's an interesting thing with the rap industry too, is the kind of like alter personality and this, you know, the, that you have that with a lot of rappers like a lot of I remember like RZA did that Grave Diggers album Grave Diggers album and it was uh like everyone had a pseudonym on there too but you you mm -hmm. see this throughout I never thought I may be mixing this up with one of the lyrics because there's this there's a video where Eminem refers to Roman Catholic abuse so I may be mixing that up or I don't know if the if he's in that song saying that happened to him I'm not. A, I don't. I don't. Not a, I don't follow him, so I don't really. I, I'm just going from memory. So don't hold me to that. I could, I could be wrong about that. Someone called it the era of glitch celebrities. Yeah, celebrity glitches. Celebrity yeah, glitch. I seen that Katy Perry one. Did you see that? Oh, with the eye. Yeah. She said it was a. She was trolling later. She's like, it's a party trick. Oh sure. <laughs> that was really weird. Yeah. But I saw a whole like YouTube reel of all of these celebrities glitching out like. Um, Wendy Williams, remember her? Yeah, yeah. She has done that a couple times. Um, who is that guy? Who Al Roper? Was... Who's that? Like the yes. black guy? Yeah. And yeah. he just like zones Someone... up. Carter McGregor like... with like, do you see the one with Carter McGregor? And he's like, in yeah. the... he's just frozen and Chael Sonnen saying something and then he like taps him and he snaps out of it. Mm -hmm. And that one with Al Roper, someone had just said the words Holy Spirit. 
and that's when he went like into his trance. Wow. And then. So <clears throat> apparently there's a story. I don't know. I'm sorry to cut you off, but okay. I don't know how legit this is, but the internet story is. Is it on the internet? Day. It's legit then. If it's on the then internet. Then it's legit. Yeah, exactly. It's Eminem and um, stepfather abuse. Okay. So. Eminem's in, in the song and that's what I'm thinking of. In Eminem's song Insane, he claims that his stepfather um CSA him. Well, so like the mechanics of this is so weird. It's like you have I mean, it's people look up to these celebrities like they're their parents, right? I mean, people are being raised by pop culture. So they see right. their parents breaking down like this, or you see they see how their parents are reacting to stimulus around them. And people mirror that. I mean, this is a natural, healthy thing to do if you live in a healthy community, right? Like when you have your kids go to, like if you're raised in like an Orthodox family and your kids go to the icon quarters and cross themselves and, and pray, it's like they, this is what they're seeing from their parents. This is what they do. But if we're being raised by pop culture and people just see, you know, oh, you know, snorting coke, being promiscuous, um, having, you know, psychological breakdowns, bragging about how much money you have, like whatever it is that the celebrities are doing they see that they mimic that it spreads out all throughout the culture and then you have an institutionalized culture of you know a bunch of where rap music is done to like the the black male population and putting them in prison and helping to keep the families broken up um all the white kids now are addicted to pills right like it's cool like Lil Xan and uh all these other yep. little little retard rappers build out build out uh mumble rap you know? yep and that's like who are those two twins the island boys oh well, they're legit those I guys are cool don't tell me those guys are like not those guys are good oh you like those guys yeah they're amazing you like them. just the I aesthetic mean... no i'm just I like those guys <laughs> yeah though that's like the ultimate american that's the american dream right there the island boys right get like internet famous for three months and just burn out and do a bunch of drugs <laughs> that's like every ball that's what the kids want to do now you know, instead of wanting to be Jay Dyers or Jamie Hanshaw's, mm. you know, that's what we're, that's what we could maybe inspire. I'm the original children. Island boy, because I moved to Florida and wore a bunch of Hawaiian shirts like five years ago. So I'm the real Island boy. Have you boy. thought about suing me? Even though Florida's not on an island. I don't know if you guys, you guys didn't even catch that. You could call me out on that. Dang. Factual, factually false. From Jimmy Buffett Island. Yeah, there you go. Jay's so high. He's so high IQ. No one can fact check him. He fact checks himself with like I fact check crazy myself. facts. I'm like my that. own. I'm my own Snope. <laughs> well, if there's anything you guys take away from this, I'm not stream. Snopes. I'm Snope singular. Not Snopes plural. I just Snope me. I just fact check me. Am I and you guys? I fact check you guys. Well, there's for free. Any, <laughs> if there's anything you guys take away from this stream, it's first of all, <laughs> Jamie wins the burn competition. She had, to, she had to stop counting me and Jay's burns. She just counted one big giant burn for her and then stopped counting. And the other one is that Florida's not an island. And that Jay, only Jay can fact check Jay. <laughs> Where are the, are the island boys from Florida? Did they not realize Florida is an island either? Where are they from? Are they they from yeah, they're from Florida. They got to be from like Florida's St. An island. <laughs> My island boy. Inland Florida. Dude. Uh, spring breakers i just always think about uh alien you know why y'all being so suspicious why y'all so suspicious <laughs> <laughs> look at all the spring breakers yeah okay that yeah. movie's we crazy watched we watched it for our show so, nice. so me and jamie watched it did you have any notes about aaron carter oh we yeah, I mean, he was he just died for anybody who's watching this and didn't realize well, you that. saw him saying that like the intelligence agencies were involved in telling him what to do and whatnot i brought a clip to play no i didn't see that i saw yeah. one where he said like someone's my fam maybe he did say that. he's like my family is trying to get me killed they're they won't let me sell my house my real estate agent won't sell the house did you see that well, one? He, i'm not trying to knock him because i know he passed away but i mean he he does look like he was uh having problems with various drugs he i think he talked about it openly yeah Turn up. I can't hear it. It's just like 
It's yeah, just, so basically, he's just saying that he's saying that uh, the record company owes me three million dollars, and my brother's a rapist, and all this, all this he, stuff. He needs money to go to a secure location so that he can give the details without fearing for his life. That's but the one I saw, notice, and he was like, "My real estate agent yeah. won't sell the house, and my family's like." Okay, yeah. I think he, he that was a, maybe a year or two ago is what I saw in the comments. That was like two years ago, and that after that he kind of like deleted it and then backed off. But yeah, I mean, why is he saying stuff like that? I mean, there's got to be a, a little bit of truth to what he's saying. It's like he's just going to be making well, all this up. Obviously, these people have problems because of what they've gone through. Like, yeah. he's on drugs because of what happened to him. Same with, you know, like at Olsen Twins or... Elvis. When, yeah, it, yeah. It's the trauma. Well, the, the, the them being on drugs is part of the way that they're discredited. And so that's by design. So nobody's going to believe them because they actually are having, you know, issues. Mm -hmm. So... Yeah. So they develop the sus substance abuse issues to deal with the spiritual, psychological, physical trauma that from being abused as children. And then that gets used against them to discredit them when they talk about how they were psychologically, physically, spiritually, and sexually traumatized as children in this industry. Exactly. Yeah, and don't forget, you know, so remember remember Randy Quaid running away to hide out in the woods because, you know, he talked about Star Whackers, but I mean... That's, yeah, you said that earlier. I wanted to bring that up, and then we went to something else. He's the one who said Star Whackers. That was yeah. Randy Quaid, Uncle Eddie, Cousin yeah. Eddie from the, the, the uh, vacation movies. Right. And so, and he plays the crazy conspiracy theorist in uh, Independence Day. Whatever happened to him? Is he okay now? Well, I mean, I assume he, he left all the Hollywood stuff to go, you know, get away from all that. That's the his story. But that's, that's the point, right? Is that, like, <laughs> there really are people who will, you know, get rid of the celebrities if, if need be. Did uh did the mainstream media ever cover when he was talking about that stuff or was it only yeah. online? Yeah. Well, they just covered it and said he was crazy for talking about that. Yeah. Because but notice that was they never like 2008, say 9. They don't talk about like you didn't see any response to uh his claims like TMZ and these media outlets like Kanye's claims about Harley Pasternak and his handlers. They're not talking about that. They're just focusing in on the one claim that he made that's taboo and you know trying to say oh he's crazy he's off his meds he's he's nuts he's crazy um but right. they never it's like you never hear them talking about why did aaron carter say this <laughs> well what about yeah and exactly what what about uh you know jacko saying the same stuff did you, did you see that clip when jacko said that sony ripped them off and yeah 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 well he remember he got in trouble there was like it was 2005 or six and he said basically the same thing that uh what Kanye is saying he's like yeah you know th they're all Hindus and they're all messing with me and they're all like you know like something like that he didn't say Hindu but you know so he he uh he got in trouble for that and they're like oh Jacko's out of control he's he's um you, you can always say anti-semitic in Ben Shapiro's voice I feel like it has to be but I can't well, Jacko and true. yeah and remember Jacko um had this didn't he have this the same celebrity doctor giving him the mm -hmm. pills that a lot of other celebrities have gotten pills from mm -hmm. i don't remember who that doctor is okay but. well this brings it full circle do you remember kanye was like he would Look. give him fentanyl in a bottle like yeah. a baby bottle whoa <laughs> like he drink he like called it his juice or his milk or something like he's that. like he's <laughs> like ordering human breast milk and mixing fentanyl in it so he can... yeah that's what did you that's what he he meant he he <laughs> that was his, he called it his he he i need my he he <laughs> <laughs> that was the bottle. <laughs> so, so, so Kanye, did you, did you catch this one? The one, this kind of brings it all full circle with the Pasternak, with the you know the the sex, drugs, rock and roll. With don't forget Dave Chappelle. Psychiatry. Don't forget Dave Chappelle. Remember Dave yep. Chappelle's quote breakdown, and that yeah. they were going to get him. Yeah, and that they they put all the black guys through a ritual humiliation, make them dress like girls. Remember all the conspiracy stuff yep. from Dave Chappelle. Yep. And the media said, "Oh, Dave Chappelle's lost it. He's gone crazy. He's out of his mind." To get away from them. And it was the same stuff that we're hearing now. Exactly. Kanye said he was like the reason he was like I got put on drugs. He's like I got committed by my trainer. I got um, my trainer and my doctor got me committed. My doctor leaked it to the media. 
He said, they drugged me and made me feel like a zombie. He's like, I stopped those drugs because they made me feel like terrible. And I stopped them right away. And he said, imagine if I was still on those drugs and I acted up like I'm acting right now. They could do to me what they did to Prince. They could do to me what they did to Michael. And he said that to some reporters or something. Well, Kanye said that, that about Prince? Yes, he said they could do what they did to Prince. They could do what they did wow. to Michael. Yeah, well, I mean, I, I, that's what I think they did that to Prince, yeah. You've mm -hmm. heard Prince talking about all the conspiracy stuff, right? Back, Yeah, he was like on Letterman talking about chemtrails or something. Yep. yep, he talked about a lot of things, but yeah. And then when he was he was pissed about his deals, he was like, they. you remember when he wrote Slave on his face? Oh, yeah. No, I forgot that. That's a good point. He was in public, and that's why he changed that. his name. I think he changed his name to the artist formerly known as Prince because oh, of the record Oh, was that company. for like contract reasons? That's Contractual smart, I reasons. I never thought about that. I thought he was just being weird. No, well, the part that. of it was that. And yeah, okay. <laughs> part of it was just him being freaky. Huh. But, yeah, wow. He wanted freedom. I've always liked Prince. Yeah, I'm a big Prince fan. But yeah, that's crazy. You know, I never, I never knew much about him. I just always, I always just assumed he was kind of like gay or something. But yeah, I don't I just, um, I never heard his music. Well, he had this, he had this weird phase where he got into Jehovah's Witness stuff and then he got into all this like end times stuff he thought it was end times and I, I mean I don't know what he I don't know if he stayed that or if he went in a different direction but he was moving towards Christianity because a lot of the, the concerts later on in his life he was he 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 thought he was like a black preacher and he would talk, he would do this like black preacher style stuff. And <laughs> wow. I mean, I, I mean, I, again, I'm sure the theology was all jacked up, but uh -huh. it reminds me of Kanye because he was like, he would like do the concerts and then he would talk about how, you know, what you really need is Jesus. Wow. Jesus is the king, guys. I want you all to know that I serve Jesus alone. Right. He would do all this kind of, you know, preaching style stuff, like yeah. a, like a black preacher in the midst of his concerts. Kanye crazy. just was doing that. I That's what I'm saying. Video. Yeah. Are you saying Prince did that? To yeah. You? Oh, okay. Yeah, Prince would do that Crazy. in his concerts. Yeah, yeah. Well, Kanye. Yeah, Kanye's transition to like evangelical. Um, is I mean that was. They were like he's crazy at that time too. <laughs> like he's just right. you know, he's so just, but his is with Jesus right? Is Jesus it? alone. Uh, Jesus King. The album that came he out. He made album ago. Jesus oh, yeah. is King. I yeah, yeah. Isn't I didn't he really wrapped up in the Hillsong people though, with like Justin Bieber? Oh, and probably. Yeah, yeah. Do, well, no. Did you see that he did a he did a concert and prayed with Justin Bieber and Marilyn yeah. Manson? Do you remember that? I did too. Oh, that's right. I that, that was really creepy. That was like, yeah, that's Weird. really hard to read. Like, why know. is Marilyn Manson there? That's not really his thing. Because he's yeah, I don't know. I just read it as Marilyn Manson is just there, like satanically vamping off of you know. Yeah, right. These, these dummies who think they're gonna <laughs> like I think I think Kanye and Bieber both really were just like, Oh, this is so big, like we're gonna he's gonna convert, we're gonna pray, like they did the whole, you know Yeah, well when you're an evangelical you think that way. You have these kind of goofy kind of like I'm gonna convert everybody through <laughs> yeah. my music. Yeah. The evangelical Eucharist is just like is going to a concert and like walking yeah. walking down the aisle to the and then like raising <laughs> right. your hands with all the people and accepting your evangelical <laughs> yeah. and you do that every year it's like, um yeah all right well oh we don't forget another big one too uh remember all the big celebrity meltdown of anna nicole smith and she was uh drugged up she was on pills probably mind control too she was put through like the marilyn monroe uh sex kitten style stuff remember yeah. that that, that was, was I mean, Jamie, weren't you guys, weren't you covering that in like 2009, she, 8? I, yeah, I remember that. that's when I came upon. They covered like, that, yeah. Yeah, it was Anna Nicole and Brittany were the twin stories that we made a documentary about. Yep. And I remember that. And yeah, Baraka she had Natan. that whole, <laughs> where she would switch altars, like start talking like a baby. Yes. She, there was one with her in like clown makeup and she was. Oh, about, the, before uh, that was the video that they put on E and and it leaked on entertainment television because she had the clown was, face makeup. Yeah, that. right before she died. Yeah. And they're like, "This is going to be some good footage," and she's like, "What's footage?" Yeah. Like a a, child, a baby yeah. wouldn't understand yeah. what's footage, and then so yeah, making her look crazy and drugged up, and then she died in Florida, in Hollywood, Florida, hmm. in a Hard Rock Cafe hotel room. Wow. What a terrible place to die. Yeah. So Anna Nicole Smith. And then her son died too, I think. Yeah, I think you're right. She had an older son. Oh, they did this and uh, Whitney. Yeah. Whitney Houston. Yep. Yeah. And her daughter died in the exact same way in the bathtub. Let me. 
make sure. So did Aaron Carter. Aaron Carter right. died in the bathtub. Yeah. I mean, that's a common place for like, most celebrities. They just they tend to die in bathtubs or choking on their own <laughs> vomit. Um, what's his name? Well, they um, said John Elvis Ballman. died in the bathroom. Right. Well, supposedly on the toilet, right? Yeah. But Elvis on the toilet. Yeah. Jim Morrison on the toilet was he? On, no, Jim Morrison in the bathtub. He was, the he bath was throwing up. Yeah. Supposedly. Okay, Anna Nicole's ex. Yes, her son did die, and Howard K. Stern is some kind of guy who's mixed up in this. That was the boyfriend, wasn't it? Howard K. Yeah. Stern. And the lawyer. You know about Brittany Murphy too. Like she was saying that she was being chased by these shady, like private security people, and they were going to get her and all this stuff. Well, remember, you, full circle. Harley Pasternak was her trainer. Harley Pasternak was her trainer, and there's interviews with him right after the death, and he blames the boyfriend. He's saying, "Oh yeah, they're the husband or whatever of Brittany Murphy." He's like, "She, he was in control. He controlled her." Somebody asked some question about how she was, and he was just like, "She was really high." You know, just kind of disrespect, you know, oh, she was just on drugs. She was high. I thought that was kind of a strange. Did die too? Irrelevant. I'm not sure. So then Mac Miller was another guy that Pastor Knack was around. I, I don't really know anything about that guy, but he was some white rapper, like some, I don't know. He's like a, Did he die? Yeah, he died of a drug overdose or something. Well, somebody should look up, check uh, who was in the circles of Little Pete because... Wikiface was recording and about to go on tour, I think, with Little Pete right before Little Pete died. So you guys have this you and Little Pete have the same handler, is what you're saying. Jay Jay your Jay Luminati handler. We just have a musical connection because cringe core is really similar to the goth boy click. So that's right. Okay. Although I, mean, I will say, say that I will say that Wikiface texted me and said he thought that Funko Pot was a great song. He did say that. So well, it was a so there song. is there is a connection. Yeah. Yeah, well, it was a great song. He really uh, recognized is, Regal. It is a great song. It's still there. It still exists. I mean, you know, it's kind of faded into obscurity behind your uh, other I know tracks. you'd like to have it deleted, but it's not. It's still there. <laughs> I mean, it's still there. I mean, I, re I did report that song about 10. I felt personally <laughs> attacked you. by that okay. song. I did report it a lot for hate speech. but Check this out. This yeah, is true. Brittany Murphy and her husband both died in the same house that Britney Spears used to live in and claimed it was haunted. And Britney Spears had to flee that house in the middle of the night and go to a hotel and never go back because it was so bad. Maybe it's got secret passages that the <laughs> star whackers can like slip into. I mean, Harley Pasternak like shows up and starts making them do Pilates. <laughs> <laughs> he's got his he's got his freaking baby bottle full of fentanyl it's like it's pilates time starlets <laughs> is he 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 <laughs> i'm for your he he oh man <laughs> well we should we should do this again guys this is uh it's always always a pleasure having you guys on it was the first time i've had jamie on at the same time with jay so it's been an honor to have both jay and jamie here today so, we covered uh, a lot of ground. It's so it's always great to do the like the rehearsal of like all this crazy uh, you know Hollywood stuff. Now that this stuff is really coming out in, yeah. in the in the on a massive. I mean, how many followers has Kanye have? Like tens of millions on Twitter. He's like one of the most popular guys on Twitter, or even probably in the world. In right? the world, I mean, I mean he he says he's the most <laughs> famous person in the world. I mean, he's got. He's got these delusions of grandeur, but he really actually is like one of the 31 or almost 32 million followers on Twitter. So, I mean, that's like huge, right? That he's super shadow so, man now. Uh, super uh, shadow man. What does Elon have on Twitter? Elon has 115 million. So he's like mm. uh, headed towards half of Elon or a third of Elon. Yeah. Hey, shout out, shout out to uh, our friends over at chalk.com. We throw, throw those codes out there. You guys, we got the, uh, we got choq.com. You guys are looking to improve. You guys are looking to break your, it, it's guaranteed to break your celebrity hand, celebrity handle programming. Um, Jay got free from his celebrity handlers by getting on the chalk that, that male vitality stack that Jay's taken to help him to break his uh his i've just started spell. adding chalk to my uh, fentanyl hee hee bottle and <laughs> it, it, it actually counteracted the fentanyl in the bottle i really like it in there 
the ashwagandha it calms your mood it actually does work like jessica loves that like, one too when i feel like i want to cry i just take one of those pills and i don't feel like i want to cry. this is what i'm saying if you guys feel like you're gonna cry living with like, me makes you want to cry every day so she has to take ashwagandha all the time is what she's yeah saying. it's like yeah. so you guys are watching this a lot of you probably you guys have spent a lot of time with jay here today so you probably feel like you want to cry you want to cry get the ashwagandha <laughs> get, get, get pop you pop them ashwagandhas uh no they're, they're great for like calming the central nervous system and reducing cortisol uh, I like the, uh, I really like the Tonkat Ali for just like general energy. Uh, the Shilajit's great, uh, great. Both of those help to improve really uh, dramatically testosterone levels. Uh, the Daily is fantastic. Everything Chalk's got, that's choq.com. You can get everything there, any subscription for 53% off if you use that coupon code BIG53LIFE. Now, Jay has other coupon codes. I don't know if those work. I got to say, I have to be honest, like, I've heard rumors that Harley Pasternak shows up at your house with a bottle of he he. Here we go with this old guy. With Here fentanyl, with if you use Jay's promo codes. But just to keep you safe, I don't want to have Harley showing up at your houses. You got to use that big 53 life, B I G 53 life, and you can get 53% off everything, all subscriptions over there at chalk.com. Um, and if you don't want to get a subscription, which is the best way to go about it because they'll bring it to you every month, right? If you're using a bottle a month of the chalk daily, uh, you get that delivered to your house monthly and you don't have to think about it, but you could also get the one time off coupon code big 50 life. That's B I G five zero life at chalk.com is link in the description link in the bio you guys make sure to support these streams by sharing the videos liking the videos doing all that stuff you're not going to get notifications from youtube but if you click the link in the description you can get notified for upcoming streams so there's a link in the description of this video and i'll pin it in the uh, in the comments as well if you want to get notified about these streams you're going to have to get notified by us because youtube is very unlikely to notify you we are in the naughty section of the algorithm we are in the uh, we are in the, uh, the on the back end of that algorithm. So make sure to support the work we're doing here by sharing the videos, liking the videos, and all that stuff. And of course, make sure to share. Jamie's book. Jamie has a book. That's what? On this, Jamie's on this got topic. a book. So you make sure to go over to jaysanalysis.com. Can they get that book at jaysanalysis.com? It's all signed copies. Yep. Uh, yep. They can get all five of our books. Yeah, we have five books, and then I have my new red book, which is 660 pages of all the philosophy and theology essays over the last 10 years. So That's an interesting that. number you use there, Jay. Why did you choose yeah, that? Did you notice number? it's not 666? I know you have a hard time with what the numbers are, but I didn't <laughs> say 666. I said 660. So okay. That's not the same thing. It's so close. Like it's close. Florida's not an island. Right. Look, if there's a six or a three or even a one in it, like um, I'm assuming by gematria, you're pretty much there already. Yeah, right? no, I, you just you just gematria yourself uh, you in the shill Number status. the beast, we, right? We Number it. the beast. We see you, we see you. So I, I'm, I'm just joking. Yeah. So you guys, that's jaysanalysis.com. What else? Where else? Where else should they go to find more of your guys' stuff? Oh, I uh, have, Rockfin. I have a new show. Jamie has a podcast on, on YouTube. You can find it. Um, by my name, Jamie Hanshaw. She has her own podcast it's, and she's going to do a Rockfin show on her Rockfin in the next coming week. Yeah. So my own show on YouTube where I talk to some cool women about all sorts of things and it's called Out of This World and you can get it by my name. And then I will be premiering my own solo thing on Rockfin this week. Awesome. Awesome. And what's the Rockfin channel called? Conspiracy Science Theater. Oh, I like, I like that. That's really cool. Yeah. There we go. So the Rockfin crew, we're growing over there on Rockfin. I started streaming this one to Rockfin, and then there was something wrong with, I don't know, my internet cut out or something happened, and I uh, that stream got cut off. So I'll upload this to Rockfin later on, reminding myself of that. But hey, guys, thanks for watching. Share the video, like the video, do all that stuff. If you want to support, right, this is 100% user-supported, right? We don't we don't have that, that, big, uh, that, that big Harley Pasternak money. Uh, you guys got to support by supporting yourselves, hitting up chalk.com, using those coupon codes, Big53Life, for 53% off everything for life on all subscriptions over there at choq.com. Or you can also support via the Streamlabs link, which none of you bigots ever do. What's your problem? What's your biggest problem? None of you guys, I, I, I haven't been gaslighting you enough or blackmailing you enough. Um, I'm going to personally send all of you blackmail emails to make you support via the stream labs. So maybe next stream, 
Uh, maybe next stream we'll get some 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 big old fat super chats dropped. Um, but yeah, Jay, Jamie, thank you guys so much. It's an honor to have you guys on. Um, uh, and by an honor, I mean it's an honor for you guys to talk to me. So I just you know thank you guys for recognizing that, uh, Jay. I am honored, and in fact, I'm going to do an extra shot of uh, fentanyl hee hee juice in my <laughs> in my baby bottle tonight for you. <laughs> yeah. All right, guys. I'm going to cut this one. Thanks for watching, guys. We'll see all you bigots next.